We're back here at Invisalign Arena one final time for the 2023-24 season, and it's a big one. NC State set to host their rival, the North Carolina Tar Heels, in the penultimate game of this regular season. Chris Lehman, Nick Prazi here with you. And Nick, this is the third of a four-game season series for these teams. Of course, we talked with both coaches before this game. Certainly plenty of opportunities in the ACCHL tournament and regionals for them to meet each other as well. So still some history to be made between these two teams this year, but really, really important games here tonight as they take each other on at Invisalign Arena and then again in the Carolina Classic on Monday at PNC. Yeah, and you mentioned it, Chris. There's been a lot of history this season alone with these two teams. They've only met twice. A game winner here back in October from Nick Shook for the Ice Pack, and then UNC with two goals late after NC State tied it late in the third period of the Governor's Cup back in November. There's been a lot of history, and there's still two more games to add, so the tonight's chapter will definitely be a big one because it has a lot of playoff implication. For UNC, a win tonight, they clinch the Atlantic Coast Division in the ACC HL. However, NC State can, if they win tonight, as well as on Monday night, they can steal that division win and take it from the Tar Heels. UNC, though, just needs one win either tonight or on Monday. Well, as you mentioned, the two teams have faced off twice this season at the same two locations nonetheless. Invisalign <laughs> Arena was the first meeting way back in late October and it was a heck of a hockey game. NC State got the game winner with a little over a minute left in overtime from Nick Shook. And then about a month or two months really later, they met again just after Thanksgiving or just before Thanksgiving as they got set for the Governor's Cup. That one equally as exciting. It was a goal by Patrick O'Shaughnessy in the final two minutes that was the difference maker. Henry Foster had an empty netter. That's what made it a two-goal game. So really when you look at it, the two games they've played have really, you take that empty netter away, they've been played to a one-goal game. So we shouldn't expect anything different tonight, I would say. No, we shouldn't expect anything different at all. The way both games have played, they've been pretty evenly matched. Both games, however, though, we've seen UNC dominate time of possession with the puck, but we've seen NC State generate a lot more offensive chances. And going back to that very first matchup back in October when NC State won, UNC has lost one game since that matchup. They have won nine in a row, just losing one game since that matchup. They have been on fire. And that's just this Ice Pack team. They've only lost two games since coming back from the winter break. They've been on fire as well. And this is a big clash of the Titans to see who can take that crown for the Atlantic Division. Well, we're certainly ready for this one to get started. Still some time left until we get to puck drop. We'll step aside and come back, taking a little bit more in-depth look at tonight's matchup when we return. Welcome to Mo! At Mo's, we've always been inviting, but we have a bigger story to tell. A place that welcomes you to be you. Fresh, high-quality ingredients. We got that. Go ahead, do your thing. Come on, let's get weird. We don't judge. Bose wants you to come in with your crew and their appetites. Dine in, pick up, or order on the Mo Rewards app. Either way, don't just stroll in, roll all in to Mo's Southwest Grill. Life is for learning. From baby steps to big ideas. We plan, try, fail, and do better next time. Each day is a new experiment. A fresh chance to seek answers. Connection. Purpose. The mind is not a vessel to be filled. It's rocket fuel. And when you start at NC State University, you can't be stopped. NC State. Think and do. Hey there, doing some yard work? Installing a new fence, flowers, or shrubs? Stop! Don't dig just yet! You have buried gas, electric, and even internet lines down there. Before you pick up a shovel, pick up a phone or go online and contact 811. 811 is a free service. Yes, free! 811 is the first step to having those buried utilities marked. 811 keeps you safe, protects the lines, and it's the law. The safety message brought to you by North Carolina 811. Locally owned and operated by an NC State graduate, the Red and White Shop is your source for all things NC State. Just off campus in the Ridgewood Shopping Center at 3526 Wade Avenue, the Red and White Shop has everything the NC State fan needs. Sporting goods and memorabilia, your favorite NC State team apparel, tailgating essentials, ice pack gear. A proud sponsor of the NC State hockey team, a percentage of all ice pack sales go back to the team. Stop by today or visit us online. The Red and White Shop.
little over 10 minutes until we drop the puck here between NC State and North Carolina. Chris Lehman and Nick Parazzi back with you pregame. We're going to take a little bit more in-depth look at these two teams and what they bring to the ice here tonight. Both of these teams, as you mentioned before we went to break, really playing pretty hot coming out of the new year. Nine straight wins that dates back past uh, the end of the calendar year schedule last year for North Carolina. But if you're NC State, you've won six of eight here in the new year. What's working well for NC State, Nick? I think right now what's working well for NC State is really the defense right now. Since the new year, NC State's only allowed more than four goals once. And coming into that last weekend series against Virginia Tech, they're averaging less than two goals a game. They allowed three in the loss to Virginia Tech on Saturday and three as well to Wilmington on Tuesday. But if you factor those two games out, this NC State defense has been rock solid. Excuse me, rock solid. Key part was Addison Lawrence in that as well, as well as Isaac Torrey, who's going to get the start tonight for the Ice Pack. And you also got to rely on some of the big guys for NC State. You see Nick Shook getting a lot of goals, Zach Herman, Zach Robinson. But also for NC State, like we saw when the players were in Europe, the depth for NC State is a lot better than most other teams. And I think that can be said as well for tonight's game. Yeah, you talk about depth on the other side for North Carolina. A lot of it has to do with that top line. That includes Patrick O'Shaughnessy, just about a goal per game player. He's got 35 goals in 21 games, or 35 points, pardon me, in 21 games, 20 goals. So he's a really, really big point producer. But the big thing that's clicking for this team right now after talking to with coach Dowda before this game here tonight is this team has settled in you obviously have the change in the coaching staff coming into this year so there weren't a whole lot of changes that was one thing coach Dowda mentioned when it came to the culture and this team at uh, head coach Jeff Volkman of the Tar Heels for the last few years has done a really good job of setting that kind of baseline that foundation and he's built off of that but now this team more comfortable with their roles doing a better job of staying within their roles and playing their system and that's what they're going to want to do tonight. But for the Tar Heels, I think the big thing is going to be the production of some of their big stars, and that includes Grady O'Shaughnessy and, of course, the big leader in Henry Foster. He might not always show up in the point column, but there are a lot of little things he does as the captain that really help that team tick as well. It's going to be a great matchup tonight. We are really excited to get this one going with that delay. I think everybody's ready to go. We're going to step aside one more time. When we come back, we'll take a look at our keys for the game as NC State and Carolina gets set to face off. Hey there, doing some yard work? Installing a new fence, flowers, or shrubs? Stop! Don't dig just yet! You have buried gas, electric, and even internet lines down there. Before you pick up a shovel, pick up a phone or go online and contact 811. 811 is a free service. Yes, free! 811 is the first step to having those buried utilities marked. 811 keeps you safe, protects the lines, and it's the law. The safety message brought to you by North Carolina 811. At Moe's, we've always been inviting, but we have a bigger story to tell. A place that welcomes you to be you. Fresh, high-quality ingredients. We got that. Go ahead, do your thing. Come on, let's get weird. We don't judge. Moe's wants you to come in with your crew and their appetites. Dine in, pick up, or order on the Mo Rewards app. Either way, don't just stroll in. Roll all in to Moe's Southwest Grill. Locally owned and operated by an NC State graduate, the Red and White Shop is your source for all things NC State. Just off campus in the Ridgewood Shopping Center at 3526 Wade Avenue, the Red and White Shop has everything the NC State fan needs. Sporting goods and memorabilia, your favorite NC State team apparel, tailgating essentials, ice pack gear. A proud sponsor of the NC State hockey team, a percentage of all ice pack sales go back to the team. Stop by today or visit us online. The Red and White Shop. It's hard to always know what's going on with your kids. The Talk They Hear You mobile app and Screen for Success tool can help. The mobile app shows you how to turn everyday situations into opportunities to talk with your kids about alcohol and other drugs. Screen for Success helps you find out if your child needs more support by asking about their health, wellness, and well-being. Keep your kids safe and healthy. Download the free Talk They Hear You mobile app and start using Screen for Success today. We get closer and closer to puck drop here at Invisalign Arena, NC State, North Carolina, coming up shortly. Chris Lehman, Nick Prazi back with you to discuss what both teams need to do here tonight in order to come out on the right end. We've talked about big implications in the ACCHL. They're also really tight in the regional standings as well. North Carolina ahead of NC State, seventh in the region, NC State eighth, separated by only about half a point uh, in those points in that point system, which is not a lot. So, Nick, what does NC State need to do? 
to put themselves in the right position to win this game? I think the NC State points of emphasis for today's game, and really for both teams first off, is going to be win the neutral zone battle. When these two teams have played both times, we've seen at times where NC State, especially that first game, they won the neutral zone battle early. They are able to play their style of hockey. But ever since really that first period of the first time they met, it's been all UNC dominating the neutral zone. Interesting to see if head coach Tim Mealy of the Ice Pack has drawn anything else up to try to combat that for UNC. And I think another point for the Ice Pack as well is you're going to have to play off of the fans. There's a very big crowd for, on hand for tonight. There's going to be an even bigger one on Monday already. But tonight, you've got to show the importance. You know that if UNC takes one of these games, you're not going to win the division. You're going to drop a little bit in the points and in the regional standings. And I think the third thing for NC State is you've got to play back to your style of hockey and play a little physical. You can't play too physical like we've seen at times. They do get Cade Cox back on defense, a massive proportion for them. He's going to help them finish and generate some offense. So I think overall for NC State, they're going to have to play a little more offensive, but I also think they're going to have to play a little more physical tonight. Well, as you mentioned, Nick, neutral zone is going to be really important. Both of these teams really thrive on being able to get through there quickly and get set up in the offensive end. So for NC State, I think being positionally sound is another thing that's going to be important. We've seen it both times these teams have met. The majority of North Carolina's really good grade A scoring chances are coming off of the rush, off the break when they're getting those chances. You think of the one for Patrick O'Shaughnessy that gave them the win at the Governor's Cup. So if you're NC State, you got to be positionally sound. You got to limit those odd man rushes, and they're going to put themselves in a good position to win this game. They've turned the lights off in the arena, so we're going to step aside one more time. When we come back, we'll be on the ice and set to go here at Invisalign. Locally owned and operated by an NC State graduate, the Red and White Shop is your source for all things NC State. Just off campus in the Ridgewood Shopping Center at 3526 Wade Avenue, the Red and White Shop has everything the NC State fan needs. Sporting goods and memorabilia, your favorite NC State team apparel, tailgating essentials, ice pack gear. A proud sponsor of the NC State hockey team, a percentage of all ice pack sales go back to the team. Stop by today or visit us online. The Red and White Shop. From the top of D.H. Hill Library. Don Diablo. Oh, yeah, this is actually, like, uh, in my studio. With- WKNC HD3 Raleigh. Hey, what's up and what's going on, folks? This is Kid Kinetic, your boy, up here at the top of the hour. And guess what I got? A treat that's too sweet to beat. This is Wolf Bites Radio. Oh, that's really sweet. In C- Always been inviting, but we have a bigger story to tell. A place that welcomes you to be you. Fresh, high quality ingredients. We got that. Go ahead, do your thing. Come on, let's get weird. We don't judge. Moe's wants you to come in with your crew and their appetites. Dine in, pick up, or order on the Mo Rewards app. Either way, don't just stroll in, roll all in to Moe's Southwest Grill. D.H. Hill Library. Don Diablo. Oh, yeah, this is actually, like, uh, in my studio. With- WKNC HD3 Raleigh. Hey, what's up and what's going on, folks? This is Kid Kinetic, your boy, up here at the top of the hour. And guess what I got? I think it's too sweet to beat. This is Wolf Bites Radio. Oh, that's really sweet. In Locally owned and operated by an NC State graduate, the Red and White Shop is your source for all things NC State. Just off campus in the Ridgewood Shopping Center at 3526 Wade Avenue, the Red and White Shop has everything the NC State fan needs. Sporting goods and memorabilia, your favorite NC State team apparel, tailgating essentials, ice pack gear. A proud sponsor of the NC State hockey team, a percentage of all ice pack sales go back to the team. Stop by today or visit us online. The Red and White Shop. 
We're back at Invisalign Arena, set for part three of the regular season series between NC State and North Carolina. The Tar Heels won the last one at the Governor's Cup at PNC Arena. NC State, the overtime winners uh, here at Invisalign back in October. Before we get to more about this one, we're going to throw it down to the ice as NC State honors their seniors. So there are your seniors for the ice pack. Only four of them, Jackson, Cowan, Luke Jagelski, Drew Bresingham, and Garrett Arini, the captain. So Nick, I think that speaks to the, the depth on this team for NC State that they have so few seniors leaving uh, and what they have coming back next year, which should be real promising as well. Yeah, it definitely should be promising considering they did lose eight, maybe even 10 seniors last year. And we Talk to you, assistant coach Eric Mira before, but you got a lot of great up and coming freshmen. And the whole first line for NC State is filled with freshmen, Brenner, Kaufman, and Shook. And we'll send it down to Wade Mentor to give away the starting lineups for tonight. At
So there's the anthem, and we're about ready to go here at Invisalign Arena. For the, those of you who may have missed the starting lineups on the North Carolina side, they're going to have Lucas Brown in net up front. It'll be Tommy Gilligan, Zach Mangle, and Patrick Peltola with Jack Gleason and Florian Zajic as the defensive pairing. For NC State, of course, honoring their seniors as they'll all be starting in this starting lineup. Zach Herman will be out there with Drew Bressingham and Garrett Arini. Jackson Cowan and Luke Jagelski will be on the back end with Isaac Toyer between the pipes. NC State wearing their white unis here tonight. They'll move right to left across your screen here in period number one in the Light blue on the other side, moving left to right, are the Tar Heels. Just about set to get things rolling here for what should be a third great contest between these two teams. Not a lot separating them. It'll be Herman and Peltola on the draw. Tar Heels control. They'll get things started in their defensive end. Zayic. Feeds it up the middle for Peltola. Deflected over to the far side and punched along there by Zach Mangle. Slapped off the near wall and returned right back in by Gleason. NC State back in control. Pinching Gleason will put pressure on Bresingham. A puck squirts loose as well as a stick. Arini now in control. He'll cross with Herman. Sliding to the middle. One touch shot there just wide. Great chance for Garrett Arini. NC State trying to establish the four check here. It'll pop loose for Gleason to throw off the wall and out. Jagelski with it under some pressure. Didn't see Mangle coming. And Alex Robinson, or Zach Robinson will alleviate the pressure. Cowan stretching out the ice. Extends it, but uh, icing will be waved off. Foster misplays. Here's Arini. Slaps one towards the goal. Crouching down. Grady blocks it. And now Foster backhands it through the middle. O'Shaughnessy across the blue line. Cuts down that far left wing where Labrizzi can pester him. It'll get tied up behind the goal. Now Foster. Floats it back out front. One time shot through traffic, catches the glass behind, and Robinson will send it the length of the ice. This one will skitter in on goal and force Brown to play it. Pitch forked up the far side by Matt Grady. Tar Heels will send it deep. First one there for NC State is Thronson. Playing against his brother on the other side here today. Now Kaufman chips it through the middle with speed, trying to poke it along, but it's Thronson there to take it away. That's Eric Thronson of the Tar Heels. Now for NC State, Andrew Thronson sends it in. Brenner first to it along the hashes. He'll get bodied up, puck comes loose, and the Tar Heels able to send it into neutral ice. Swatted right back in by Thronson. Now Eric with it. He'll absorb a hit, but NC State gets to the puck. Chasing it down near corner, now Nick Shook. He'll leave it along the wall. Kaufman battling there with Walsh. Holden Kaufman comes away with it, turning in the corner, under some pressure. Gets loose, finds Shook, swept on goal pad, save made, and the rebound swallowed up by Lucas Brown. Good chance there for NC State. Yeah, it's second really good chance for NC State. I believe it was Arini on the first attempt. You just missed it wide of the net on that long pass. And as for UNC, that first really action to play that we had, it was a long shift with that first line. O'Shaughnessy went out with about two minutes into the shift and into the period. So a long shift causes NC State to get that other chance. Extended battle off the faceoff. Tar Heels win it but can't clear. Backhanded right back down low by Oliver. Now Cobber for the Tar Heels throws it off the far wall. Q and Doig takes it on the fly. Wrist shot in and an easy save for Toyer with the glove. Now, I didn't really talk about the goalies too much in the pregame, but when you look at these two goalies, two of the best on their team, Toyer coming into this game with a 3-3-1 goals against the season. And Lucas Brown for UNC, a 2-7-1, two, two star-studded goalies going at it tonight. Bresingham powers his way out of the zone. Crosses the blue line, takes a shot. Easy glove save for Brown this time. And NC State will have the offensive zone draw. Not quite three minutes in, but a, kind of a choppy start to this game here. Yeah, no one, no team really is able to keep possession right now. They're getting shots on goal. If the NC State's have better off. Opportunities. UNC definitely, though, has had their chances as well. But like I mentioned in the pregame, you've got to win the neutral zone. Both teams right now are doing a really good job of dominating it as NC State's going to go for a late line change. 
But you get offensive zone draw here. If you're UNC, you want to get it to the neutral zone and try to win it. But if you're NC State, you want to keep the pressure on UNC. And now a bit of a discussion to Adam Dodd. He's confused why NC State was allowed the late sub. As a home team, NC State does have the opportunity for the last change. Puck tied up in skates. Loose puck grabbed by Lohr. He'll steer it towards the net where it's directed into the corner by Brown. They'll fight for it behind the goal. Lohr again turning with it, trying to force it out in front. Blue jersey's there to knock it up to the blue line, but it's McConaughey sending it right back deep. NC State continuing with good pressure. Daniel battling along the wall. Some help there from Lohr, who sweeps it around the wall. Tar Heels back in control, off the skate, and then swatted all the way down by Vaglia. This will be icing, and NC State going to have a chance here with some tired Tar Heels on the ice. And they already got two shots on goal for NC State, and really right now what NC State's doing so well is that forecheck. They, we kind of saw a big glimpse at it at the beginning of the year, even the first time these two teams have played. Their forecheck hasn't been as strong since then, but tonight they're so far off to a great start with it. One forward by Herman, centering pass, didn't get to Arini. He'll chase it down on the far side. Puck skitters out into the neutral zone. D to D pass for Cox. He'll lift it back deep. Bouncing puck. Slapped at there by Gleason. Settled at the blue line, one-timer, and a save made by Brown again. Good opportunity there, good idea from Cade McConaughey to just direct that one on goal. Yeah, why not? There's a lot of traffic in front. Get the shot. Brown had to take a second to find it, locate it. He stayed home with it. And by him gloving it, freezes the puck. It gives UNC a much-needed line change. Off the draw. They'll fight for it. Robinson swings one in front. Nobody there in a white jersey. He's got it again. That shot's blocked. It's the third try. That didn't go either. Tar Heels defending the front of the net well. I don't think any of those got to Lucas Brown. Robinson continuing to go to work. Now behind the net. Double teamed there as he's pinned to the wall by a couple of Tar Heels. Thronson in there along with Edwards. Now in to help McEnany for NC State. Finally the puck pops loose and it'll be the Tar Heels taking over. Peltola into the middle for Gilligan. Has a breaking man mangle with some speed. Takes the shot and slides it wide of the far post. Around the wall held in by the Tar Heels. Down low, Jigelski. Off the wall for Cowan. He's got Arini up the middle, backhanded towards Robinson, but UNC takes back over. They need a change. When Mango had that opportunity on the odd man rush, the entire UNC bench stood up. They knew what was going to happen. Mango just couldn't hit it on the net, though. How about this forecheck, though, by UNC while they get the line change? They're doing a really good job, and I think they're doing a good, better job now preventing NC State from entering the offensive end. Here comes Herman with speed, lifted it up and over and out of play. Trying to pick that top right corner with Brown down, but couldn't find it. Yeah, Herman's going to go off here. That first line comes back out for NC State. Kind of a wasted second line shift there for NC State. Really good job by UNC putting the pressure. Really started ever since Mangle had that break. The odd man rush definitely helped him. A fight for it in that far corner. Brenner comes up with it for the pack. Leaves it for Kaufman behind the goal. He'll swat it around the wall. First one to it there. Shook fighting for it with Foster. Tar Heels wanted a slash on that play, but it will carry on. Brenner into the zone. Absorbs a hit as he sends it deep from Grady. It'll be set on a tee for Spencer Haskell. Stolen away in the far corner. Ice pack on the four check. Brenner looking to the middle. It'll skip through to Thronson. He throws it off the wall. Off the side of the net. Nobody there in a white jersey. Rebound picked up by Shook. Good offensive zone pressure here from the ice pack. All the way across to Labrizi now at the blue line. He'll sweep it back behind. Looking out in front, Brenner can't get it there, and pouncing on the loose puck on the goal line is Lucas Brown for another face-up. Well, if you're NC State, you really like that sequence of plays right there. The puck is loose in front, and you're getting Lucas Brown to move around, and you're forcing him to come way out of the out of the crease to make that save and freeze the puck. You're doing a really good job with that, but you're gonna have to start looking for more high chance shots. Florian Zajic has it for the Tar Heels off the draw. They'll move it into the neutral zone, but Labrizi sends it right back from the red line. Gleason under his own goal line now. Hits a stick, deflects to Bresingham, stepping in. Ooh, he took a high hit. And NC State's going to get the first power play of the game. And then Henry Foster probably has a little bit of a, an argument here as Bresingham went down low to take the shot. And that's kind of what created the discrepancy there on the hit. But it's going to be an elbowing call and a big opportunity for NC State to get on the board first. Really good opportunity, and they did a really good job 
getting down the ice. That was a really good opportunity for Bressingham before he took the hit. Foster not happy with the call and a really big power play opportunity for NC State now. And the important thing here is to win the offensive zone draw, and they do. Marini steers it around behind. Zayic there, took an awkward carom off the stanchion, but right to Peltola, who swats it all the way down the ice. And so far, good kill so far for UNC. 15 seconds in, get it right down the ice. This is where you're going to be tested, though, when NC State brings it in at full speed. Labrizi stops up inside of the blue line. He'll hold up around the top of the circles. Down low, he's got Robinson. Fed out to Arini on the near side. He'll slide it back down low. Now Herman, again the captain, stepping in, throws it around the wall. Nick Shook will get to it at the far blue line. Fan on a pass down low. Zayic sends it the length of the ice again, and that will kill more time. 45 seconds gone on the main advantage for the ice pack. And a whole line change for UNC for the final 75 seconds of this penalty kill. Nick Shook sends it behind the goal. NC State back in on the forecheck. Leighton Walsh's clear is blocked by Labrizi. Held in nicely by Shook at the blue line. He scores! NC State on the power play, and it's 1-0. What a fantastic job by Nick Shook to keep the puck in the zone. It was sitting right on the blue line, and he's able to keep it in the zone. Watch it just squirt up to Labrizi. He kind of quarterbacks his power play all the time. Shook wide open up top of the zone, keeps it in the offensive zone, and for the top of the slot, wrists it home. And for Nick Shook now, he's got, excuse me, he's got 39 points of the year, goal number 21, and the ice pack lead 1-0. Well, it'll be North Carolina winning the center ice draw to restart play. One thing that the Tar Heels have done well every time they've played this NC State team is respond with a goal of their own. Let's see what they can cook up. Edwards pinching in, holds the zone for the Tar Heels. Ice pack will isolate it over on that far side, though. A four-man scrum along the wall now. It'll be pitched into the NC State corner down low. And now lifted out in a neutral ice. Glove down by Thronson, bouncing puck hard to handle. NC State can't enter the zone cleanly though. Now Edwards looking to stretch things out. Duig will throw it off the wall and deep. NC State's Cox there. He'll play catch with Lore. Ice back in the middle of the line change here. Stretch pass for Daniel, skips his stick, and it'll be icing on NC State. Well, you mentioned it, Chris. UNC's done a fantastic job this season in the previous two matchups answering what NC State does. They immediately score the game winner in the Governor's Cup. They immediately tied the game at two the first time these two teams met back in October. And now in icing, this seems like the prime opportunity for the answer back to happen for the Tar Heels. It'll be McEnany on the draw for NC State against Vaglia, who wins it for the Tar Heels. Shot blocked on the way through, and it'll be lugged out by Cade Cox. He's got speed trying to split the D. It'll slide in on goal and it's covered up by Lucas Brown. Nice little effort there from the NC State defense. Yeah, first game back as well for Cade Cox. Skates in hard, a little slow to get up. Went down awkwardly around the net. And he's skating a little gingerly. It's not a good sign for NC State. He's gonna come off. And the first game back, one of his first shifts back, and that is something you don't wanna see for NC State. Hopefully he's all right. Looked like he would shake it off. NC State with a shot wide off the draw. They'll fight for it in the corner. NC State gets it down low. Wraparound try there, doesn't get to the net. Puck slides back out for Jagelski. Feeds it down the wall for Bresingham, who steers it below the goal line. Looking to send it back out was Williams. Couldn't connect with Bresingham. And now the Tar Heels move it up and out. It's Carson Rain gaining the red line and sending it deep. He'll be forced into the wall by Jagelski. That'll give Cowan time to send it up the ice. It missed everybody. And they're going to wave off icing. Edwards now far side. Swats it back around where Foster can collect it in his skates. Steers away from Shook. His pass up the middle is deflected all the way down the ice. And they're going to... They're going to... The official, one of the, the head officials just made the call. The linesman didn't see it get deflected by NC State. So the faceoff will be at center ice as that one was an ice move. Well, right now, UNC is just having a hard time sustaining offensive zone time, and they're having a hard time winning that neutral zone battle. That was one of the key emphases that we put on this game is win the neutral zone battle. And so far, NC State's won it, and I think it's the reason why they're up one nothing. A 
Shaughnessy tried to win it forward and couldn't, but Foster came away with it. NC State quickly dispossesses and takes it down the ice. Kaufman to the middle, pad save made by Brown and the rebound cleaned up by Ben Edwards. Here's Foster for the Tar Heels. Beautiful rink-wide pass to O'Shaughnessy. He'll snap one right into the shin pads of Labrizzi, but the Tar Heels maintain control. Centering feed doesn't get there. Shook now in control for the ice pack. Looking to the middle, Kaufman can't get to it. He'll slap it forward where Brenner can take control. He's knocked down hard by O'Shaughnessy, and the Tar Heels send it all the way down. Now Shook, bodied up. Able to hold on to the puck, leaves it now for Brenner. Snaps one off a stick and over top. Foster getting in the way there. And another offensive zone draw for NC State. Nick, ice pack, a lot of offensive zone time. The shots reflect it. Scoreboard only one nothing though. Yeah, it's 7-1 to in the shot category. And that's been a problem for this NC State team really for most of the year, especially here in Invisalign. Despite the fact that they come into this game 10-2 and two in this arena this year. They haven't really had a lot of finishing success in front of the net. We've seen them lose games because of it, and then they even lost the Governor's Cup because they just couldn't finish some easy shots. Patrick Peltola dances through the top of the offensive zone and gets it deep. NC State trying to pitch it out the near side, held in by Miglio. Top of the circle, Mangle has trouble with a bouncing puck. It's still loose there. NC State able to knock it into neutral ice. Glove down now by Cox. He'll weave through traffic. Button hooks and finds Arini on the near side. Shot scooped up and held on to by the goaltender, Brown. Well, other than the big hit on Aiden Brenner, there really hasn't been a lot of energy for this UNC team, it seems like. O'Shaughnessy's had a nice couple rips on goal. It seems like NC State's just overall the more energetic team. They're flying to the puck better. They're winning every loose puck, every 50-50 puck's going their way. And I think right now, that's why they're able to dominate the offensive half. One to Robinson. One-timer just missed the near post. Robinson didn't see it till it was too late. NC State just about had another. Walsh. Takes one away from Robinson at the blue line. He'll bring it through neutral ice. Finds Cobber, who fans on the shot, and sweeps it around the wall. Now Arini looking up the middle for Herman. That's intercepted by Q and Doig. He'll send it back into the NC State end. Tar Heels in control. Walsh has his stick lifted. Puck comes loose, and now it's Zayich in neutral ice. Back forward for Cobber. Looking things over. Takes the shot. Easy blocker save for Toyer. They'll steer it into the far corner. Doig again. One on one there with Cox. Puck comes loose though. Tar Heels still in control. Zayic with the shot through traffic. Caught the glass. Walsh swats it back out in front. They'll battle for it in the low slot. And NC State finds the loose puck. Arini sends it off the wall and out. And that'll alleviate pressure at least for the moment. This has been a good stretch for the Tar Heels. Maybe getting caught in a change though here. Daniel with some speed down that far right wing. Looking to the middle. Pass denied nicely. Tar Heels, Chandler Katseos got in the way of that pass. Nice hit by Cowan up at the red line. Puck loose, McEnany with it. Cowan coming with him, centering pass. Knocked right back out by Jack Gleason. That was the best opportunity for UNC. Had a lot of chances in front of the net with the loose puck. I think if they start getting into that dirty area, we've seen them do it a couple of times this season against the Ice Pack. I think that's going to be the big key, get into that dirty area and try to fling a loose puck home. Here's Carson Rain looking back for Kutseos. They couldn't connect. Vaglia finds the loose puck and sends it down below the goal line. Back out. Thronson with the shot. That one pinballed through traffic and wide. But still, the Tar Heels maintain the four check. Nice steal there from Alex James. And it'll be McEnany lifting it up and out. Ice Pack trying to get some fresh bodies out there. Edwards leaves it at the blue line. Rain to the high slot, chance coming. High slot, and it's knocked away. A couple of good opportunities there. Tar Heels only got one on goal. Now NC State looking to counter. Pass forward by Williams is disrupted. Tar Heels move it back forward. O'Shaughnessy pestered by Williams. Lost control, puck still sitting on the blue line, and they're going to call that one off sides. I thought that one was still in, but a good break there for the ice pack. Yeah, I agree with their, you there, Chris. That puck, to me, was just sitting on the blue line, kind of like how NC State got their earlier goal. Not 100% agree with that call, but how about the play from Jackson Cohen right in front of the net? Made a fantastic defensive play, and he keeps the game at 1 0. Ice pack control off this faceoff. Bressingham 
Threads the needle looking for Oliver at the blue line, unable to control, and the puck will be battled for along the far wall. Kicked forward there by Foster. Oliver first to the loose puck for the ice back. He'll lug it into the near side. Ooh, big hit on the near side as Oliver caught that curved glass. Looks like he's okay. Foster with a heavy hit there. Tar Heel captain in control now. Looking to the middle, unable to connect there with O'Shaughnessy, and NC State will regather. Brenner through neutral ice. He's got Shook crossing the blue line, left for Thronson on the near side, fed to the middle. That one pops straight up in the air. Tar Heels in control again. Foster swings one to the near side. O'Shaughnessy in on the four check against Kaufman. Holden Kaufman finds Thronson with a little bit more space. Rink wide for Kaufman on and off his stick. He'll chase it down, has some speed to the net. Oh, he tried to go five hole on Brown, who shut it down. Shook to the middle. Kaufman another try turning around. He couldn't put it on goal. Moved up the near side. Gilligan with some speed working on Thronson. He'll carry it into the corner. Centering pass went all the way across. Edwards slaps it back towards the slot. NC State comes away with it. Here's Nick Shook across the right line. Working on Gleason. Backhand shot and a nice glove save made there by Lucas Brown. Those backhanders can be tricky sometimes. They can be, and I think Lucas Brown made two of his best saves of the game right there. The first save was a really nice one that he made, able to pat it away. And how about gloving that backhander? Did a fantastic job of doing it. He's got to get into the back into the crease here. They're about to do the face off, but I think Brown is starting to settle into this game and get into a really nice groove, and that's something that UNC likes to see down on the scoreboard right now. Tar Heels will send it down the near side. NC State's Cade Cox beats it to the goal line, so no icing. Stretch pass for Herman up to the red line. He'll glide into the offensive zone and send it back behind. Robinson first to it, looking out in front. Hit the net with the pass, gets it back though. Now Herman at the goal line. He'll look up top. One-timer coming from McEnany. Blockered away by Brown. Good pressure from NC State now as Cox wrists one through the slot that nobody gets a piece of. NC State will have to regroup as the puck comes out in the neutral ice. Robinson sends it in. Gleason lost an edge, an opportunity here for the pack. Herman back behind the goal. He's got Brenner fed out in front, nobody there. And it'll be picked up by Gilligan. He's got speed moving with Doig. Two on two as they go. Loose puck knocked away from Gilligan as Cox comes away with it. And he'll drop it backwards, but right to Gilligan. UNC forward looking for some help. Trying to connect with Walsh, who will steal it away from NC State's Zach Robinson. Good defensive play there from McEnany to knock it loose, and now NC State slows things down a bit. You can see how this game has gone back and forth. At times, the Tar Heels have had NC State pinned, and at other times, it's gone the other way. Ice pack with the only goal so far. Here's Cam Lohr down the right wing. Takes the shot right into the crest of the uniform on Lucas Brown. Another easy save for the Tar Heel net miner. Another good offensive opportunity for UNC. And with that loose puck in the offensive zone for NC State, Cade Cox, I think, showed how much he's matured as the season gone on. The freshman normally be aggressive on that loose puck and go for it. Instead, he skates back. He's able to make a good defensive play before he turned it back over. But that's something you really like to see. Cade Cox being able to become more of a true defensive defenseman. That's a play earlier this year he would have stepped up and try to get some more offensive zone time. One-timer from the high slot didn't get to the net for Cam Moore. Tar Heels get it out of the zone as Vaglia runs through Jagelski. McEnany trying to force his way back into the offensive zone. He'll be knocked down there by Chandler Kutseos, who steps through the neutral zone and finds Rain on the near side. His slap shot blocked on the way in. NC State will loop it up and out. And now some space to move forward for Williams. He's got Bressingham with him. Crossing high slot shot. Missed the near side. And it's loose in the near corner now. Rain with it for the Tar Heels. Gives it away, though, to Williams. Has it caught in his skates. He'll retreat to neutral ice to get control and then send it right back to the Tar Heel defense. Gleason looking cross ice. Glove down by Oliver. He felt that one a bit. He'll carry on. Williams intercepts the pass but can't hold on. Tar Heels back in control. Cycling with it, Rain. Looking out in front. They'll poke away at it. And the rebound grabbed there by Isaac Toyer. And a little extra pushing and shoving afterwards. I don't know how that puck ended up right in front of the net, but it did, and Toyer kept his eye on it all the way. It's something that a goalie 
has to do. They have to be so good when the puck is behind the net. Whether to know if a wraparound chance is coming or a play like that where it's going to score it back out and your glove side is coming. Very good job by Toyer staying in front of it. Face-off one forward by the Tar Heels. They've mostly had control in the face-off circle so far tonight. We got a couple of ice pack players down. They're able to clear it out. There was a little bit of entanglement over there after the faceoff moved away. Tar Heels still with pressure, shot wide from the far blue line. Off the wall, Brenner will send it right back behind, and NC State tries to set up the breakout. Stolen away by O'Shaughnessy. He'll slide it back behind the goal. Works all the way around for Zayic. He'll pitch fork it back deep. NC State again will restart the breakout. Labrizi. Skate to stick, now Brenner sends it across the ice. Move forward for Nick Shook. He's got Foster and Gleason on him, trying to split the defenders, unable to keep his balance, and now Brown goes flying into the Tar Heel net as Shook kind of lost control there, trying to split the demon. And I don't think there's going to be a penalty on that Shook. Collided with two UNC players with the puck and then just lost his balance, kind of got shoved into him. Just a contact play overall. But overall in this game, really the past four, five, six minutes even, UNC has done a really good job. Allen, the forecheck. NC State's having a hard time breaking out. They're starting to play that style of hockey they played the last couple times against this Ice Pack team. As Lucas Brown's going to have to shake that one off, a little shooken up from that contact. But if you're UNC right now, that forecheck is working really well all of a sudden. And that one out of play, they're going to say it was deflected, but UNC's doing a really good job right now of getting that forecheck, getting more offense his own time, and NC State's making a lot of mistakes in that defensive end. Face off one forward by Kaufman. Missed the shot wide of the near post, and now the Tar Heels can move it up and out. Miss Q in the neutral zone, NC State will turn it back. Stepping up, Thronson clears it out for the Tar Heels. Now Cade Cox. D to D with McConaughey. Forward for Brenner. Back to McConaughey. They get tangled up. And finally, it comes loose where the Tar Heels can advance it. Tough play there for Zach Mangle. NC State pushes it back out. Thronson again for UNC at his own blue line. That's Eric Thronson. Up for Gilligan. Lifts it right into the glove of Cox, who sets it down and moves it along for Nick Shook. Shook. High slot shot, he scores! Second one of the game for Nick Shook, and NC State has a two-goal lead. How about Nick Shook? Second of the game, and now he's got 40 points on the year. I think he just wrapped up freshman of the year in the ACCHL. Just from the point, just trying to shoot it on goal. He was the first man on the offensive end, and sometimes you just take the shot or can force a face off, can force a loose puck, and sometimes you can end up into the back of the net. And boy, oh boy, has the freshman been such a difference maker for the ice pack. Now 2-0 NC State, they've taken advantage of all the chances they've had today, and it's the reason why they're up on the scoreboard. Well, they'll go right back in on the four check, trying to set things up. Tar Heels will bring it back out. Doig ships it deep. And now the Tar Heels looking for that response that they need. Back up to the blue line. Zayic takes the shot, hit a body on the way through, and there's a Tar Heel down. Play will continue as NC State advances. Here's Arini. He's got Herman in the middle, looking to the middle for the pass, and it was knocked out by Miglior. Got a skate to it. As to get a look at Leighton Walsh, who was the injured Tar Heel, who makes his way back to the bench after being hit with the shot. NC State looking for another. Herman couldn't get it to the goal. Zayic with it for the Tar Heels. Move forward for Cobber. He'll skate it across the blue line. Left off for O'Shaughnessy. Bodied up there by Robinson, but he'll hold on. Top of that far circle. Fires one up into the glass. NC State will push it along and out of the zone. Under 40 seconds left in this first period. Great start for the Ice Pack, a two-goal lead. Trying to finish the period strong as Cowan knocks down O'Shaughnessy at the NC State blue line. They'll battle again. Lore now chips it along. 
all the way down. It'll be a foot race here. The icing is waved off as Edwards gets to it first for the Tar Heels. They'll move it forward for Foster, down to 15 seconds left as he crosses the blue line. Foster dragging, trying to get around Thonson and can't. Puck loose on the side of the goal. It's Andrew Thonson for NC State. One last push here for the ice pack. Here comes Scott Daniel with five seconds to go. Fires away. Glove save made by Lucas Brown, and that should finish off period number one. Excellent start for the ice pack. They've outshot North Carolina 14 to six, and they've got a two nothing lead. Nick. Yeah, I want to go to that injury about Leighton Walsh. He blocked that shot, hit him in the left knee. He was the first one off. Wasn't on the bench, was just outside of it when he came off after taking that puck to the knee. And he's the first in the locker room. Hopefully he's all right. But in terms of that period, that was the Nick Shook period. And I think that's the best this NC State team has looked almost all season against one of the top teams in the division. Two goals from Shook, just one penalty on UNC. They took advantage of it. They had a hard time, though, towards the end of that period, getting the puck out of their defensive zone. But we're in for a really good one headed into the second period, Chris. Yeah, it'll be a great one. NC State, of course, gets the start they want. We'll be back with the first intermission. It's 2-0 pack after 20 minutes. Hey there, doing some yard work? Installing a new fence, flowers, or shrubs? Stop! Don't dig just yet! You have buried gas, electric, and even internet lines down there. Before you pick up a shovel, pick up a phone or go online and contact 811. 811 is a free service. Yes, free! 811 is the first step to having those buried utilities marked. 811 keeps you safe, protects the lines, and it's the law. The safety message brought to you by North Carolina 811. At Moe's, we've always been inviting, but we have a bigger story to tell. A place that welcomes you to be you. Fresh, high-quality ingredients. We got that. Go ahead, do your thing. Come on, let's get weird. We don't judge. Moe's wants you to come in with your crew and their appetites. Dine in, pick up, or order on the Mo Rewards app. Either way, don't just stroll in. Roll all in to Moe's Southwest Grill. Locally owned and operated by an NC State graduate, the Red and White Shop is your source for all things NC State. Just off campus in the Ridgewood Shopping Center at 3526 Wade Avenue, the Red and White Shop has everything the NC State fan needs. Sporting goods and memorabilia, your favorite NC State team apparel, tailgating essentials, ice pack gear. A proud sponsor of the NC State hockey team, a percentage of all ice pack sales go back to the team. Stop by today or visit us online. The Red and White Shop. It's hard to always know what's going on with your kids. The Talk They Hear You mobile app and Screen for Success tool can help. The mobile app shows you how to turn everyday situations into opportunities to talk with your kids about alcohol and other drugs. Screen for Success helps you find out if your child needs more support by asking about their health, wellness, and well-being. Keep your kids safe and healthy. Download the free Talk They Hear You mobile app and start using Screen for Success today. Locally owned and operated by an NC State graduate, the Red and White Shop is your source for all things NC State. Just off campus in the Ridgewood Shopping Center at 3526 Wade Avenue, the Red and White Shop has everything the NC State fan needs. Sporting goods and memorabilia, your favorite NC State team apparel, tailgating essentials, ice pack gear. A proud sponsor of the NC State hockey team, a percentage of all ice pack sales go back to the team. Stop by today or visit us online. The Red and White we well, couldn't have asked for a much better start for the Ice Pack. Two goal lead over the North Carolina Tar Heels after 20 minutes. Chris Lehman, Nick Prozzi back with you here at the first intermission. And Nick, couldn't, like I said, couldn't have asked for a much better period if you're NC State. They had the majority of the offensive zone time. They outshot North Carolina 14-6. to And, of course, most importantly, they've got the advantage 2-0 on the scoreboard. Yeah, and I told you right as we went to commercial at the end of that first period, Chris, that was the best period this NC State team has played against UNC all season long. They looked like the far superior team. They were winning every 50-50 puck for most part of that period. They have the two goals. They're out shooting them by eight right now. They are definitely dominating it. But towards the end of that period, you saw UNC get 
get back a little bit. Saw puck loose in front of the net. Toyer did a really good job of staying in front, staying with it, and getting it out of the zone. We also saw a couple of good defensive plays by Cade Cox, Jackson Cowan as well with some very nice defensive plays. But UNC starting to get that forecheck working a little bit. They're starting to gain momentum by doing it. So going into the second period, I think NC State's going to have to adjust to it or else UNC can come back into this game. Well, something that's always important, especially in a series or a game that you expect to be tight like this one, and that's special teams. NC State takes advantage of that penalty on the captain, Henry Foster, and it's Nick Shook tallying his first of two. Yeah, two goals for Nick Shook. First one on that power play, like you mentioned. And in a big game like this, a lot on the line. You want to keep your emotions in check, especially against your main rival. But so far, there hasn't really been too much chipping. It's just the big hit on Drew Bressingham that got the penalty on Foster, which allowed Nick Shook to get that goal. And then, really, we haven't seen any other penalties since then. We've seen a couple of hits, a couple of late hits, but nothing that has caused an uproar for either side right now. And you go to Nick Shook's second goal, not on special teams, an even strength goal, just bringing it into the offense his own, letting it risk from the point, and this, really the reason why he's got 22 goals in the year now is because he's just that special when it comes to that. Well, as we mentioned, Nick Shook with both goals for NC State, <laughs> the driving force behind the offense right now. We'll talk to him on the other side. NC State with a two-goal lead over North Carolina. Welcome to Mo's! At Mo's, we've always been inviting, but we have a bigger story to tell. A place that welcomes you to be you. Fresh, high-quality ingredients. We got that. Go ahead, do your thing. Come on, let's get weird. We don't judge. Moe's wants you to come in with your crew and their appetites. Dine in, pick up, or order on the Mo Rewards app. Either way, don't just stroll in, roll all in to Moe's Southwest Grill. Locally owned and operated by an NC State graduate, the Red and White Shop is your source for all things NC State. Just off campus in the Ridgewood Shopping Center at 3526 Wade Avenue, the Red and White Shop has everything the NC State fan needs. Sporting goods and memorabilia, your favorite NC State team apparel, tailgating essentials, ice pack gear. A proud sponsor of the NC State hockey team, a percentage of all ice pack sales go back to the team. Stop by today or visit us online. The Red and White Shop. From the top of D.H. Hill Library. Don Diablo. Oh, yeah, this is actually, like, uh, in my studio. With WKNC HD3 Raleigh. Hey, what's up and what's going on, folks? This is Kid Kinetic, your boy, up here at the top of the hour. And guess what I got? A treat that's too sweet to beat. This is Wolf Bites Radio. Oh, that's really sweet. In C State. Stupid controller froze again. Spending less money. I'm so. if you guys want me. OMG, it's McGruff. Yes, I am. He's not my Uncle McGruff, the crime dog. He's a fake. Oh. oh. I am McGruff, the crime dog. He is the fake. And so is that controller you're holding. It's going to break. Let's take a bite out of crime together. Who says you're not the fake? Dude, you're literally missing me. <laughs> you are smart, kids. You're smart. Buy smart. Delaney Kearns here with goal scorer Nick Shook. Nick, you've been a dominant player all season, really. And then to come out tonight and have two goals, how does that feel in the last home game? Um, it feels great, especially because it's against UNC. You know, <laughs> anything's great against them, but it's good that we're rolling and we got some momentum going into the second and third. Yeah, I was going to ask, what is the momentum like? What is the energy like going into tonight's game and then taking that into the second? Um, since the rivalry game, everything's fast, everything's physical, you know, just keeping up the speed, keeping it going. That's what we got to do in the next two. All right. We'll be back with more in a minute. From the top of D.H. Hill Library. Don Diablo. Oh, yeah. This is actually, like, uh, in my studio. With WKNC HD3 Raleigh. Hey, what's up and what's going on, folks? This is Kid Kinetic, your boy, up here at the top of the hour. And guess what I got? A treat that's too sweet to be. This is Wolf Bites Radio. Oh, that's really sweet. In Locally owned and operated by an NC State graduate, the Red and White Shop is your source for all things NC State. Just off campus in the Ridgewood Shopping Center at 3526 Wade Avenue, the Red and White Shop has everything the NC State fan needs. Sporting goods and memorabilia, your favorite NC State team apparel, tailgating essentials, ice pack gear. A proud sponsor of the NC State hockey team, a percentage of all ice pack sales go back to the team. Stop by today or visit us online. The Red and White Shop.
Locally owned and operated by an NC State graduate, the Red and White Shop is your source for all things NC State. Just off campus in the Ridgewood Shopping Center at 3526 Wade Avenue, the Red and White Shop has everything the NC State fan needs. Sporting goods and memorabilia, your favorite NC State team apparel, tailgating essentials, ice pack gear. A proud sponsor of the NC State hockey team, a percentage of all ice pack sales go back to the team. Stop by today or visit us online. The Red and White Shop. Welcome to Moe's! At Moe's, we've always been inviting, but we have a bigger story to tell. A place that welcomes you to be you. Fresh, high-quality ingredients. We got that. Go ahead, do your thing. Come on, let's get weird. We don't judge. Moe's wants you to come in with your crew and their appetites. Dine in, pick up, or order on the Mo Rewards app. Either way, don't just stroll in. Roll all in to Moe's Southwest Grill. Welcome back here to Invisalign Arena. It's 2-0 NC State after 20 minutes. Chris Lehman, Nick Prazi back with you. We just heard from the goal scorer, Nick Shook, who picked up both goals for NC State. Nick, we were just talking about it. Very similar spots that those goals came from. Out high near the blue line. First one was through a little bit more traffic on the power play. The second one really only had one or two guys in the way of Lucas Brown, but a couple of long-range goals going in on the UNC netminder in the first. Yeah, and that first one being on the power play, NC State's done a really good job today. Something they haven't really done all season is shoot from the point and get traffic in front. They're more of a team that likes to get open in the slot and shoot or look to pretty close to the net and get shots on goal there. But tonight they're trying that from the point and getting traffic in front. The first one with Nick Shook did a fantastic job keeping it in the offensive end, preventing it going from the neutral zone for being offsides. Or excuse me, that was Nick Labrizzi. And then Shook did that as well. He collected the puck and then he just shot it from the slot. No one really near him. And then on that second goal, like you mentioned, also from distance, almost the exact same spot on the ice is where he took it right in front of Brown, right in the middle of the slot, able to find the back of the net and get it home. So that might be something against he State looks more to in this second and third period and something Lucas Brown might need to adjust to. The traffic in front is starting to get to him a little bit. We see NC State do a really good job getting traffic in front and getting a lot of shots from the point. So expect UNC to adjust to that. Well, now as we start to take a look at the second period, we're going to get a little bit more into those adjustments. I think when you look at that first period overall, NC State was able to do what they wanted. They were able to get through the neutral zone fairly cleanly and get set up in the offensive zone. As you can see, that resulted in more offensive zone time, more shots, more chances, and in the end, more goals. The thing you have to watch out for, and the thing that I'm still waiting to see out of North Carolina, is a couple of really, really good chances off of the rush. We saw a couple of opportunities. You mentioned in that first period when Grady got in on a break down that far left wing, the entire North Carolina bench stood up. That's how they like to produce. Off the rush, particularly against this NC State team in this series this year, they have hurt NC State off the rush more than anything else, and that's what they're going to have to find a way to do, I think, the way NC State has been able to control the offensive zone. Yeah, I was going to mention that goal in the Governor's Cup that gave UNC the victory it was O'Shaughnessy and UNC loves to rush down the ice they love to get odd man rushes and they love to get those cop guys O'Shaughnessy Gilligan Foster then even Caseos a couple times was getting down there Mangle as well they love to get those guys down the ice two on one three on two situations and try to get a quick shot so far though NC State knows this they've adjusted well from the previous times Cade Cox like I mentioned during the broadcast during that period could have easily been aggressive on the offensive end instead he sits back plays defensive, limits an odd man rush for UNC, able to get the puck back. Same goes for Nick Labrizzi. Jackson Cowan made a very similar play to what um, Cade Cox made as well. So this NC State defense has shown maturity since the last two times they played. They know what to expect out of this UNC team. They know what they're going to do. They're going to try to get down the ice quickly. And that first period really didn't mention O'Shaughnessy or Gilligan at all. Yeah, and I think when you go back to, you mentioned how NC State played at the blue lines. That's another thing that plays into it. That's part of the reason they've been so strong through the neutral zone is they have won the battles more often than not at the blue line on that first goal. Great keeping at the blue line to create that chance. We saw a couple of times where they stood up North Carolina at the blue line, didn't allow them to get in cleanly and get those chances off the rush that they like. And the other thing you brought up there that we mentioned in the pregame, being positionally sound. NC State not taking unnecessary risk, not pinching when they don't have somebody to cover, and I think that is going to have to continue as this game carries on. But the thing is, you make that mistake once, North Carolina can make you pay. Yeah, and it's a two-goal lead right now. It's 
One goal for UNC, you're back in it. NC State scores a goal, goes up 3-0. It's the most dangerous lead in hockey. UNC can get all momentum with just one goal. So right now, if you're NC State, you want to come out firing like you did that first period. Come out with a lot of physicality, a lot of energy like they did at the start of that game, and try to adjust to that UNC forechecks that started succeeding them well towards the end of that period. I think going into this second period, though, for UNC on, on their side of the ice, you're doing a really good job getting offensive zone time, but I think you got to have to get a little longer. We've seen NC State do a really good job playing physical, getting all up in UNC's faces with the puck, making them make hard passes, nothing really open in front of the net. you got to do something to adjust that. Maybe try point shots, get traffic in front of the net. I think that can work really well for UNC, and they need to get Toyer uncomfortable. Only saw him get uncomfortable once in that first period. Well, and you mentioned Toyer. Perfect segue into my last point here before we wrap it up for the second period. Isaac Toyer only saw six shots. He looked good the entire period, though. He looked comfortable. He looked ready when the shots came, and I think he's going to have to be ready for a little bit heavier workload. One thing that we've seen out of this North Carolina team that they do well is adjust. They'll go to the locker room, they'll make their adjustments. NC State, of course, will adjust to the things that they need to as well. But I think goaltending for NC State right now, they have the advantage and they need Isaac Toyer to keep it that way. Yeah, don't expect this game to balloon to 4 5 nothing. NC State. UNC is going to adjust. They're going to find a way back into this game. It may not show in the goal score, but if they don't score a goal this period, I think it could still easily be 2 nothing, maybe 3 nothing. But expect UNC to adjust. Expect them to get underneath NC State's skin, find something that makes them uncomfortable and be able to capitalize on it. Yeah, well, we're 20 minutes down. It's a 2-0 lead for NC State. Still 40 minutes left to play. We'll be back with the second period. Welcome to Mo! At Mo's, we've always been inviting, but we have a bigger story to tell. A place that welcomes you to be you. Fresh, high-quality ingredients. We got that. Go ahead, do your thing. Come on, let's get weird. We don't judge. Mo's wants you to come in with your crew and their appetites. Dine in, pick up, or order on the Mo Rewards app. Either way, don't just stroll in, roll all in to Mo's Southwest Grill. Life is for learning. From baby steps to big ideas. We plan, try, fail, and do better next time. Each day is a new experiment. A fresh chance to seek answers. Connection. Purpose. The mind is not a vessel to be filled. It's rocket fuel. And when you start at NC State University, you can't be stopped. NC State. Think and do. Hey there, doing some yard work? Installing a new fence, flowers, or shrubs? Stop! Don't dig just yet! You have buried gas, electric, and even internet lines down there. Before you pick up a shovel, pick up a phone or go online and contact 811. 811 is a free service. Yes, free! 811 is the first step to having those buried utilities marked. 811 keeps you safe, protects the lines, and it's the law. This safety message brought to you by North Carolina 811. Locally owned and operated by an NC State graduate, the Red and White Shop is your source for all things NC State. Just off campus in the Ridgewood Shopping Center at 3526 Wade Avenue, the Red and White Shop has everything the NC State fan needs. Sporting goods and memorabilia, your favorite NC State team apparel, tailgating essentials, ice pack gear. A proud sponsor of the NC State hockey team, a percentage of all ice pack sales go back to the team. Stop by today or visit us online. The Red and White Shop. Locally owned and operated by an NC State graduate, the Red and White Shop is your source for all things NC State. Just off campus in the Ridgewood Shopping Center at 3526 Wade Avenue, the Red and White Shop has everything the NC State fan needs. Sporting goods and memorabilia, your favorite NC State team apparel, tailgating essentials, ice pack gear. A proud sponsor of the NC State hockey team, a percentage of all ice pack sales go back to the team. Stop by today or visit us online. The Red and White Shop. Welcome to Moe's! At Moe's, we've always been inviting, but we have a bigger story to tell. A place that welcomes you to be you. Fresh, high-quality ingredients. We got that. Go ahead, do your thing. Come on, let's get weird. We don't judge. Moe's wants you to come in with your crew and their appetites. Dine in, pick up, or order on the Mo Rewards app. Either way, don't just stroll in. Roll all in to Moe's Southwest Grill. We're set to start period. We're set to start period number two between NC State and North Carolina. Ice pack with a two-nothing lead. You get a look there at some of the rowdy fans in the building. It is a great atmosphere 
here at Invisalign Arena as expected, and right now NC State delivering it. Yeah, these two schools played a lot and a lot of different sports this week. Women's basketball last night, a wrestling match tonight, and right in front of you, hockey tonight. These two schools obviously don't like each other. A lot of signs out there tonight and a lot of rowdy fans, and it's a big reason why NC State's been so well at home this year as we start the second period. Gilligan with a shot from the high slot that missed high. Tar Heels looking to get off to the right foot here to start the second period. Absorbing a hit, Robinson finds Arini on the break. Looking to the middle for Herman, second try. Misses number eight in the white jersey and the Tar Heels can turn it back the other way. Dragging it, O'Shaughnessy moves through the neutral zone. Steps past Labrizzi and into the corner. He'll backhand it up for Zayic, hits hops his stick and out of the zone. NC State will get a little bit of a breather here. Herman collects at the red line, has to hold up with Robinson offside, and his pass is stolen away by O'Shaughnessy. Fed forward intended for a cover, but NC State will take it right back. Here's Robinson looking to split the defense, drops it off to no one on that left side, and here come the Tar Heels. It's O'Shaughnessy again, turning, shoots, and he puts it right into the leg of Thronson, who's a little bit slow getting up. Andrew Thronson for NC State. Looking up the wall to be knocked down by Cobber. NC State still comes away with it. It's Kaufman with some speed. Nice little poke check there from Q and Doig, and NC State is offside. We'll bring it out on top of the Carolina blue line for the faceoff. A lot of good defensive plays by both teams. Zayic on the defensive end for UNC, doing a really good job just lifting the stick of Zach Herman, not letting him get a shot and goal right in front of the net. And then Nick Labrizzi in front, I believe it was on O'Shaughnessy, did a really good job, and then Zayic could have handled the puck, and it went back into the neutral zone. Cade Cox retrieves it off the faceoff. Receives it back for McConaughey. He'll carry it across the red line and lift it in. Back behind Lucas Brown. McConaughey now again at the blue line. Throws it through traffic. It bounces in on Brown. He'll direct it into the far corner. Up top again, McConaughey. Another shot. Missing the deflection in front was Shook. Loose there in the blue paint, and the Tar Heels clear it out. They'll look to clear it all the way out of the zone, but McConaughey holds the line, and NC State goes back to work on the four check. Eric Thronson of the Tar Heels moves it around for Dewey. Again, McConaughey holds the line. In the corner, Shook centering pass, bounces into the near circle. McConaughey holds the blue line once more. Down the wall, Kaufman. He'll be bodied up. Puck comes loose, and Duig can't clear again. Great play by McConaughey at the blue line. High slot, Shook finds Brenner, steps in, backhand try. Brown makes the save on the side of the goal. Good pressure here from the ice pack. Cox pins it to the wall, getting some help there as well from Emery Oliver. His centering pass intercepted by Peltola. NC State has to regroup and neutralize. Pitch forked in by Cade Cox. Centering pass intended for Bressingham off the mark. Now Leighton Walsh on the break. Good job getting back by James. He'll cut off the angle, and it turns into an easy glove save for Isaac Toyer. Well, the, the benefits of having the long line change in the second period is that there isn't any benefit. It's a benefit that the other team does, and you're in the offensive end, and UNC just faced that. But like you mentioned in intermission, UNC loves to push the pace, try to get those odd man rushes quickly, and Leighton Walsh was right there for UNC. Good to see him back out there after blocking that shot off his knee in the first. Henry Foster circles back and gathers speed. High slot shot, crouching down, Cowan makes the block. Foster looking to center, too many white jerseys there. Tar Heels keep it in, that's Rain sending it down low. Cowan trying to return it. A battle below the goal line. Swept along to the near side. Miglior for the Tar Heels has his shot blocked. Loose in the high slot, coming away with it, Conseos looking for space to shoot. Good back check there from Bressingham to disrupt. Had some help from Alex James as well. Now Emery Oliver sliding it through the middle, trying to connect with Lohr. NC State though needs a change, and they'll get four fresh bodies out there. Miglior interrupted, crossing the blue line. And they'll fight for possession here. Conseos rink wide. Now sent up the middle for Leighton Walsh. He'll gain the red line and sweep it all the way down into the NC State end. Tar Heels now making their change. Something to see this really as the game goes on is NC State's blocking a lot of shots for UNC. Seemed like good high quality shots for the Tar Heels, but there's a white jersey in front of them a lot of the times, not letting the puck get all the way on net. Here's Gleason. 
He'll slide it up the near side for Grady. He throws a weak one on goal, easily handled by Toyer. And another offensive zone draw here for North Carolina. I'll tell you what, UNC right now had a hard time getting out of their zone. Again, it's kind of like the beginning of that first period. They're having a hard time getting to the neutral zone, trying to win that battle. They're able to get an offensive zone faceoff here. They've got O'Shaughnessy, they've got Grady, and they've got Gilligan. Dangerous line out for UNC right now. Shot right off the faceoff by Grady. Went straight over the mask of Toyer and High. Tar Heels trying to create some pressure here. Robinson chops it up the wall. It'll be grabbed by Arini. NC State captain has some speed. Turns it around, and the one-timer there from Herman. Left in front, they score. And I'm guessing they're going to wave this off. That looked like it was kicked in by Labrizi. But they're going to talk about it first. Let's get a look at this replay here. I think you're exactly uh, spot on, Chris. I think Labrizi kicks it in. Yeah, you can kind of see him move his foot there. He's saying he got he got pushed into it. Not really any arguing that one. I think the refs made the correct call. And the faceoff will come to center ice, no goal. Labrizi's gonna plead his case. He was looking for just the second goal of the year. He's not gonna get it. And we'll have a faceoff on. NC State side. Tar Heels able to come away with it. It was a good chance nonetheless for the ice pack. As this one will go the length of the ice hit. Uh, NC State player on the way through. Bad bounce here is Grady one-timer wide. Good chance there for North Carolina. Now maybe an opportunity for Arini. He'll beat Gleason to the puck. Steers it to the middle. Nobody there in a white jersey though. And North Carolina clears it out. Oh, that was such a bad bouncer, NC State, but Grady missed the net. It was right there for him. Just couldn't hit it home. That was the best chance that UNC had all game. Would have cut the lead in half to one. He just couldn't find the back of the net. They got puck luck, though. They're going to need it again now. They couldn't take advantage of it. Long pass to the neutral zone, directed to the middle by Grady. It'll be bounced right back to him. And now Cade Cox looking to push it through neutral ice to Shook. He's dispossessed. Now Gilligan for the Tar Heels. Spinning pass to the middle, intercepted. It's Shook again. Ice Pack have numbers if they hurry. Looking to the middle. Cox breaking in. Has it knocked off his stick by Thronson. And they'll battle for it along the far wall. Coming away with it is Cox. Turning, squaring up, firing. Pad save made by Brown. First one in the, to the rebound in the corner is Robinson. Slapped up the wall. Tar Heels can't clear. Shot right back in by McConaughey to the near corner. That will be poked around now for Shook behind the goal. He'll protect it there. Looking out in front, one-time try, fanned on by Kaufman. Another great chance for the ice pack. Shook absorbs a hit, knocks his man down. Ice pack regroup in their own end. Shook swats it all the way across. No icing on this one as Brown sets it on a D behind the goal. Clearance held in at the far blue line by Shook. He'll kick it to his skick. Walking in, looking for the third, and the shot is blocked by Gleason. NC State maintains the pressure. Here's Kaufman at the top of the circle. He'll turn around and take the shot. Hit a skate on the way through, and Eric Thronson looking to clear, but Kaufman holds the blue line. Oh, never mind. It did come out. The linesman had his hand up, and this one will come back out into neutral ice. Yeah, Kaufman didn't know it was offside. NC State benched yelling at him. But that whole sequence right there, ever since that chance UNC had right in front of the net with Matt Grady, it just seems like they haven't been 100% on the puck with a lot of energy. NC State's getting there. A lot of lazy play being played by UNC, and it almost cost them a couple turnovers, and it's the reason why they weren't able to clear out before. They'll break in Peltola. Now Edwards throws one high and wide. Foster. Holds the blue line far side. Slaps it down deep. NC State's James has it. Looking to clear and can't. Tar Heel player lost his edge. No delayed penalty. Will continue to play. Doing for North Carolina. Two ice pack defenders there. Oliver and Cowan. Can't come away with it though. Here's Cobber stepping to the middle. In the slot. Shot by Peltola. Stopped by Toyer. Turn around. Try again. Hit a skate. And it's Alex James carrying it out. He'll push it along for Lore. Pressing him into the zone, and they're offsides. There is a lot of physical battles going on right in front of the net of Isaac Toyer as Cowan gets into it a little bit with Juan Doig, UNC. Actually, they're going to send Doig to the box and Cowan. They're going to get matching minors here. 
on Sportsman like for both of them. I I don't really see why. We haven't really seen a lot of it. They must have said a no-no word or something, but that's really the first after play curriculars that we've had in matching minors. We're gonna go on the four on four hockey for the next two minutes. Well, this should be a treat for everyone watching. Extra space on the ice and a lot of skill on both sides as the Tar Heels immediately ice the puck. And an offensive zone draw here for NC State. The pack have Arini and Herman out there as the forwards with Labrisi and Thronson on the back end. It's Walsh out there with Kutseus, while Edwards and Foster are on the back side. Off the draw, ice pack in control. Herman turning with it. Pushes it back up the far wall and gets it back from Thronson. Loose puck inside the blue line. Foster comes away with it. Herman takes it right back. He'll float it to the middle, trying to connect there. And now NC State gonna get a four on, whoa, never mind. This is gonna be a penalty on NC State as Walsh brings it in. And this will be a four on three once the puck is touched. Here's Leighton Walsh. It's five on four right now with the empty net. Foster absorbs the check there from the stick check from Herman. He'll carry it in, trying to drag around Thronson. NC State touches up and a penalty on the ice pack, a cross check to Zach Herman. I didn't really see it. it was behind the play. They're gonna get Herman on a cross check. And now we're gonna have Four on three, NC State gonna be down a man, and then it'll be 44 seconds of a UNC power play. So, a good opportunity for UNC to come back into this game on the man advantage. Oh, and a lot of threats out there for North Carolina. O'Shaughnessy, Foster, Grady, Peltola out there on the power play, four on three. It'll be Cade Cox, Emery Oliver, and Cade McConaughey on the power, or the penalty kill, I should say, for NC State. It's a minute left on the four on three, then Cowan and Doig will come back, and it'll be five on four for the remainder of the power play. O'Shaughnessy circling behind the goal, slides it back up top for Foster, across for Grady, high slot. He'll take the shot, block down in front, loose there, scrambling, Toyer makes the save, and he covers up. Well, Peltola, Peltola and O'Shaughnessy had a really good chance in front of the net. Peltola gets pushed down. UNC thinks that should have been a penalty. We're going to get a good replay of it. Lots Peltola right in front of the net, blocking Toyer. The shot comes in from Grady, gets pushed down by McEnany, and then O'Shaughnessy just didn't quite have the angle. Big save from Toyer. I'll set up the power play again with the Tar Heels. Top of the umbrella, Foster slid down to the far side. O'Shaughnessy having some trouble with the pass. Now the Tar Heel power play scrambling a bit. Here comes Foster, takes the shot. Save made by Toyer again. Foster has his own rebound. Down to 23 seconds of four on three. Rink wide, O'Shaughnessy takes it off the wall. Pestered there by Oliver who pins him along the boards. Loose puck, Foster finds it as he gets the pass from Peltola. Now to Grady. Couldn't get the shot off in time. Easy save for Toyer, and it's sent all the way down by the NC State penalty kill. That will kill off some more time. 45 seconds left on the power play as it's five on four hockey with Doig and Cowan back on the ice. A lot less room, NC State out of position. And once again, Mac Grady had an easy goal. He just couldn't corral the puck. He should have two of them today, but he just couldn't get a stick on the puck and get it to leave when he wanted it to. Here's Leighton Walsh for the Tar Heels quarterbacking. Lifts it to the blue line, held in nicely by the skate of Zayic. Down for Gilligan, rebound in front, two pad saves made, another try, and again, Isaac Toyer with the answer. The NC State netminder standing strong again. Isaac Toyer needs to try out for the gymnastics team, the way he's doing the splits. Really good opportunity from UNC in front of the net. And watch what he does, just goes right up into his shoulder, then off the pad. That was Leighton Walsh trying to get in on the deflection. Toyer made another pad save as he went all the way down into the splits. That made a very nice save. And NC State able to clear all the way down as Zayich not able to stop it. That should kill off most of the rest of this power play. Eight seconds left. Pressingham in on the four check. Tar Heels one more push with the extra man on the ice. Walking in rain, shot, glove saved by Torrier. He'll hold on and that finishes off the power play officially. And NC State remains up by two. 
Well, halfway through the second period, and UNC has had an onslaught of shots, especially the last three minutes, nine shots this period. And as it goes on, Isaac Torres is getting stronger and stronger as the chances get better and better for UNC. If you're UNC right now, you're starting to get in your head a little bit. You're trying to find ways to beat Isaac Toyer, but you keep in the offensive zone. Sooner or later, you're going to find one in the back of the net. Bagley on the draw against NC State's Herman. Push to the middle. Arini comes away with it. He'll steer it back behind the goal. Good momentum generated off the power play by North Carolina. We'll see if they can carry it into five-on-five five play. Mangle steals, takes the shot, post sealed off by Toyer nicely, and the puck gets caught up behind the goal. James pushes it forward for Robinson. He'll advance it to Herman, has Cowan open in the middle with the blue line. He'll skate it in, NC State just stayed on side. Cowan continuing to carry down low. Now Gleason trying to clear it up the wall. Held in by James for the pack. Wrists it all the way around the wall. Robinson steps in from the blue line and takes it. He'll walk down the wall. Knocked off the puck by Zayic. Tar Heels trying to set up and break out. Zayic up the near side again. It'll be forced out now by Mangle. As he gains the red line, lifted in. Tar Heels need a change. NC State trying to stretch it out and catch them on the change. Here comes Herman into the middle. He's got Robinson. Great back check from Cobber. Lifts the stick and denies the chance. NC State keeps it in the offensive zone. Here's Herman. Skate to stick. Quick shot. Brown makes the save in tight. The breezy at the blue line now. He'll send it down into the corner. Picked up by Eric Fronson of North Carolina. Now the Tar Heels can break it out. In the skates of Peltola. Deflects right to Cobber. He'll carry it down that right wing. Looking to the middle. Right through the top of the blue paint. Nobody there. Now they battle on the near wall. Shook on, again, on Edwards. Bouncing puck, still loose. Eventually squirts down low for Labrizzi to steer back behind. He finds Andrew Thronson. Shook, under pressure from Peltola. Loses it at the blue line. Ice pack regroup behind their own goal. It's Labrizzi again. Now Shook has Robinson in the middle. He'll skate it through the neutral zone. Trying to get past Thronson, who knocks him down hard. Kaufman to the loose puck for NC State. Circling back behind, he's got Labrizzi up top. Quickly across for James. He'll step into one. Save made by Brown, and pardon me, that was Thronson. And NC State with an offensive zone draw coming up. You mentioned the shots, though, Nick. That for NC State was their fifth of the period, right now being outshot 9-5. Yeah, but I want to go back on the topic of Alex James, like you mentioned, Jim. He's a reason why this game's 2-1 to one right now. At a fantastic job preventing the wraparound, I believe, from Leighton Walsh. Toyer just going to get over in time. James, a big reason why this game is 2-0 still right now. But UNC in that last shot was out of position. And we're going to get a penalty for, I believe, a tripping. And it might be on O'Shaughnessy. Well, I think on all three penalties that have resulted in power plays now, the offending team has kind of disagreed. NC State scored on their first power play chance. And it only took them about a minute to do so. We'll see what they can produce here on their second man advantage of the game with 7.50 to go in the second. And the best player for North Carolina out of the game right now, O'Shaughnessy. But that's not going to stop from UNC from going on the shorthand push like Mike Grady is right now. Grady. Steps around the breezy. He's going to be forced into the wall hard by Nick Shook. And now NC State has speed through neutral ice. Labrizzi holds up inside of the blue line. Slides it down low. Cross ice pass finds Shook. He'll take the shot. That hit his stick on the way through. Loose along the side of the goal. Robinson sweeps it back up top. Again, it's Nick Shook from that same sweet spot. Shot blocked, and Grady will lug it out. Tar Heels killing some time. He'll send it deep, and NC State restarts the power play from down low. Shook up for Robinson. Now Herman has some space. He'll glide inside of the new, into the offensive zone. Dropped off now Labrizzi. 1-10 left on the man advantage as the Tar Heels deflect a pass out of the zone. Shook wrists it right back in behind the NC or the UNC net. Now watch Mangle here for UNC. They're going to send it in deep. Mangle's going to try to go get it and put a Good four check on. Did it earlier. He's had a long shift, though. I think he's got to come off the ice soon. He's being the top of that diamond formation when NC State's not on the offensive end. Scott Daniel sends it all the way around the wall. Knocked down there by Mango as NC State's Cade Cox. Kaufman collects the loose change. Here's Cox again. Looking things over at the blue line. Fans on the pass. It's stolen by Mangle. 
He doesn't have the energy, though, to take it the length of the ice. Kaufman takes back the turnover. He's going to take it straight down the middle. Henry Foster with a nice defensive play will clear it out with 22 seconds left on the power play for the ice pack. And Zach Mangle finally coming off the ice, put his entire body and stamina out there on almost a, a minute and 40 seconds on the shift. And NC State really hasn't generated many shots on this power play, and that should do it right there. Getting it back down the ice, another good forecheck from Leighton Walsh. Bronson brings it around the boards to Kaufman. Elevated through the neutral zone, a bouncing puck knocked down by Edwards to the far side where Gleason can clear at the length of the ice. It'll be waved off the icing, Will. Power play was over, but Thronson was in a position they deemed he could have played it. Now Jagelski swats it into the offensive end. Cam Lauren on the four check, forces the puck back behind the goal. Edwards now in control. He'll move it forward, Leighton Walsh has it. Pushed along and we've got another whistle. And I think we might have another penalty coming up here on North Carolina. We got a player down, actually, behind the play it looks like. This is in our blind spot where we are up top. Yeah, I didn't see what happened. Both teams right away starting back a little worried. Been a very hard and physical game. I still don't know exactly who it is down over there. It's by the NC State bench in our blind spot. And we're going to have a quick stoppage for it. Uh, it looks like it's Cam Lohr who's down in the corner. We didn't get a good look at what exactly happened, but based on the, the quick round of applause we hear, he's getting helped off the ice. Not a lot of weight on that right foot, on that right leg right now. We'll find out a little bit more probably at the intermission. But that stop the play. It's going to be an offensive zone faceoff coming up here for North Carolina. 5.23 to go in the second period. It is still a 2-0 advantage for NC State. Walsh and Herman on the draw. Herman wins it back into the NC State corner where it'll be knocked around the wall by Cowan and pitched up and out by Robinson. Here's Arini. Leaves it off for Herman, but he left it out of the zone and NC State is offsides. Couple times now, NC State's had a hard time getting into the zone. Arini's leading the charge, while well, the rest of his line mates, both Zach Robinson and Herman, just aren't there with him. So when he leaves it off, it ends up costing them and getting them at offsides just because of how fast and ahead of the play he is. Tar Heels win the draw, send it back out into the neutral zone. James there for NC State. Arini directs it along for Robinson, and they can't connect. James again for the ice pack. D to D with Cowan. He'll give it back. Now James's pass up the ice is blocked by Carson Rain. Trying to slap it to the middle, can't do so. Rain's still in control. Backhanded to the middle, nobody there. Now NC State breaks it up and out. Here's Herman moving forward. He's got Robinson in the middle. Cross ice for Cowan. Loads one up and a glove save made by Brown. Took maybe a little bit too long for the NC State defenseman to get it off, but a good chance nonetheless. Yeah, I don't think it was right and flat on Cowan's stick. That's why he waited a second. If he shoots it right away, though, and it is flat, it's in that good position on a stick. I think that's a goal. It's 3 0. Big break there for UNC, a big miss opportunity for the Ice Pack. They're going to get an offense's own faceoff, though. Um, faceoffs have been pretty even this period. Kaufman wins it over Peltola. Back to McConaughey. He'll drop it down for Shook. Takes the shot from the boards. Easily handled by Brown. And it'll be taken up by the Tar Heels. Henry Foster forward for Cobber. Now Doig moved along. And they are off sides. On something worth noting. I'll have to take a look down in front of us at the bench for North Carolina. But Henry Foster is usually a forward. And he is right now playing on the defensive side for the Tar Heels. Not really known as a goal scorer for this team. He can score the occasional goal. A lot of times scores the bigger goals for them. But he's going to have to play the back end. We'll see if the Tar Heels are shorthanded in some way. Doig now in the near corner. Sends it up the wall. Thronson there. So is Shook for NC State to disrupt. Loose puck still being battled for. Doig sends it all the way around and deep again. NC State has time to set up. Brenner. Light pressure from Cobber, cross ice for Cox. 3.52 left in this second period. 
Nobody's been able to put one in the back of the net here in this period. Still a 2-0 lead for the pack. Nick Shook receives it from Cox with some speed. Cross ice for Brenner, it's in his skates. Cook, Shook, pardon me, pokes it along and sweeps it all the way down low. Brown, under some pressure, plays it to Foster, and he'll set up behind the Tar Heel cage. And both teams right now just trying to control possession of the puck. Just trying to see what they can break out into the neutral zone, try to set something up offensively. Right now, both teams can. A nice catch by Leighton Walsh on the bench to save that puck from hitting Mangle right in the face. Gave it a little extra flair oh, there, he like did. a goaltender as well. He puck flashed out of, the glove. <laughs> puck out of play means it's a face-off in the Tar Heels offensive zone here. To the blocker side of Isaac Toyer, it'll be O'Shaughnessy to take the draw against NC State's Oliver. I know UNC's got three goalies rostered. You might want to look at Walsh the way he gloved that puck, though. Labrizzi steps through traffic after NC State won the defensive zone drive. He's got speed to the net, shot it just wide. Great chance there for the NC State defenseman stepping up in the rush. That'll leave an opportunity for Carolina. Gilligan to the middle, and it's denied nicely by Thronson. Back and forth we go. Here's Emery Oliver, and they're offsides. Pretty smart play there by Grady. I don't know if it was intention, but he ended up hitting Labrizzi just after he got rid of the puck and knocked him in before NC State entered the zone. Yeah, he pushed him into the offensive zone to cause an offsides, and we don't have. There's not an official stat for offsides <laughs> in a game, but uh, there's been about I don't know eight, ten for NC State, five or six for UNC. There's been a lot of offsides, and I think it's because both teams are playing physical in the neutral zone. They want to win that neutral zone battle, and I think that's why we're seeing so many offsides called by the referees tonight. Down under three minutes left in the second. Labrizzi wrists one in from center ice. Directed by the blocker of Brown into the far corner. Knocked around by NC State's Jagelski. Tar Heels looking to break out. Carson Rain has it swatted off his stick and back behind. Collected there by Gleason. Fed forward for Leighton Walsh. Unable to corral there. NC State's Labrizzi. Now McEnany sends it all the way down. Gleason first to it for the Tar Heels. He's got Zayich held in at the blue line by James. He'll wrist it back around the wall again. Jagelski first two. It looked like Gleason just didn't want to take the hit. NC State going to go to work. Here's Brenner turning on a dime. Looking out front, it's not there, so he goes to the blue line for Thronson. Across for James. Settles it down. Sends it down the wall. NC State going to have to regroup as a bouncing puck was tough to control. Zach Herman hooks one along. Brenner receives the touch pass from Robinson. He'll take it down that near right wing. Forced off it in the corner by Zayich. Leighton Walsh, ha Walsh has it with some speed, and he's able to absorb the pressure there from Robinson. Forward for Cobber. He'll step around a couple of ice pack players. Big save made as it's kicked out by Toyer and away from Doig. NC State going to rush after it all the way down. Edwards wins the race over Arini, and it's icing on the pack with 1.27 to play in the second. And UNC getting traffic in front of Toyer. I haven't seen a lot of shots on goal for either team in the past four minutes, it seems like. But an offensive zone faceoff, Arini just skated hard about two-thirds of the ice down. It's the long line change, final 87 seconds. This is a prime time for UNC to steal a goal back and get back within one into this hockey game. Linesman barking out orders on where to be off the faceoff. North Carolina wins. Shot by Gilligan is blocked on the way through and stuck on the side of the goal. Arini pushes it forward for Herman. NC State carries it out. Zach Herman will send it down into the near corner. First one there is Robinson in the ice pack uniform. Looking up the wall, it's not there. Instead, he sends it low for Arini in the corner. He'll be knocked off the puck. O'Shaughnessy trying to control it and can't, but the Tar Heels still able to move it out. Here's Gilligan with some speed. Disrupted there by James. NC State will stall it out at the red line and turn it back. Robinson hands it off. Nobody there in a white jersey, though. O'Shaughnessy has some speed, has some help, and the centering pass denied by James once again. NC State doing a good job of protecting the front of their net right now, but the Tar Heels getting some pressure. Foster one-timer. It floats into the goal, and a blocker save made by Toyer on a change-up there. And the ice pack with a nice clear cross ice will avoid the icing, and they can get a couple of fresh bodies out there. Foster has some speed and some space down the near side. He'll hand it off for Vaglia. That shot missed 
Off the glass behind the goal. Mangle now for the Tar Heels. Down low for Peltola. Working on Alex James of NC State. He'll turn with it. 11 seconds left in the period. Now Foster. Drop back for Peltola. He's got Vaglia. Backhand shot. Stopped by Toyer. He'll toss it into the corner, trying to bleed out the rest of the clock. And that's exactly what will happen. So NC State not able to add to their advantage here in period number two, but they maintain it a 2 0 lead. Now going back to that last sequence of plays, O'Shaughnessy flying into the offensive end, the most dangerous player for North Carolina, and Zach Herman has to come back on a already very long line, or excuse me, very long uh, line shift, and he comes back, makes a heck of a play to lift O'Shaughnessy's stick. I think the big emphasis this period is this NC State defense has been phenomenal this game. They're sacrificing the body, they're being physical, they're tying sticks up. It's something we really haven't seen them do all season in terms of sacrificing the body in these stick lifts and battles. But it's a big reason why the Ice Pack have a 2 0 lead right now. You would see a two chances with Zach Mangle, couldn't find the back of the net, and that's why the Tar Heels are still scoreless at the end of the second period. So we're through 40 minutes. NC State looking to hold on to that two goal advantage in the third period. We'll be back with the intermission. Locally owned and operated by an NC State graduate, the Red and White Shop is your source for all things NC State. Just off campus in the Ridgewood Shopping Center at 3526 Wade Avenue, the Red and White Shop has everything the NC State fan needs. Sporting goods and memorabilia, your favorite NC State team apparel, tailgating essentials, ice pack gear. A proud sponsor of the NC State hockey team, a percentage of all ice pack sales go back to the team. Stop by today or visit us online. The Red and White Shop. Welcome to Mo's! At Mo's, we've always been inviting, but we have a bigger story to tell. A place that welcomes you to be you. Fresh, high-quality ingredients. We got that. Go ahead, do your thing. Come on, let's get weird. We don't judge. Mo's wants you to come in with your crew and their appetites. Dine in, pick up, or order on the Mo Rewards app. Either way, don't just stroll in. Roll all in to Mo's Southwest Grill. Hey there, doing some yard work? Installing a new fence, flowers, or shrubs? Stop! Don't dig just yet! You have buried gas, electric, and even internet lines down there. Before you pick up a shovel, pick up a phone or go online and contact 811. 811 is a free service. Yes, free! 811 is the first step to having those buried utilities marked. 811 keeps you safe, protects the lines, and it's the law. This safety message brought to you by North Carolina 811. When you look at me, you might see a person with Parkinson's disease. But if you look closer, you'll see a warrior mom, an endurance athlete, someone with a lot of fight. Every nine minutes, someone is diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. And every one of them can turn to the American Parkinson's Disease Association. Look closer. My spirit is, is unshakable. unshakable. Visit APDAParkinson.org to learn more and show your support today. From the top of D.H. Hill Library. Don Diablo. Oh, yeah, this is actually, like, uh, in my studio. With WKNC HD3 Raleigh. Hey, what's up and what's going on, folks? This is Kid Kinetic, your boy, up here at the top of the hour. And guess what I got? A treat that's too sweet to beat. This is Wolf Bites Radio. Oh, that's really sweet. In C State. Through 20 more minutes, the score has not changed. NC State with a 2-0 lead over North Carolina here at Invisalign Arena. Chris Lehman, Nick Perazzi back with you here at the second intermission. And Nick, saw kind of an up and down period and a couple of power play opportunities on both sides. North Carolina generated some chances there, but again, they haven't been able to beat Isaac Toyer, who has been stellar. They have not, and I thought that power play going on four on three, a lot of space for UNC. 
especially when they got O'Shaughnessy back. I thought that was going to be, excuse me, O'Shaughnessy never left. That's a power play. He never left. Have your best player still out there, unlike the penalty kill they had. Four on three, a lot of space out there. I thought that was a key time. They had a lot of good shots, 11 shots total in the period. But when you look at the scoreboard, they don't have one past Isaac Toyer. And I think it's just because of how good Isaac Toyer has played. I think this is the best hockey we've seen him play in the Visalign Arena this year. He's been phenomenal. He's robbed a couple goals from UNC. I also think UNC's missed a couple of opportunities. Zach Mangle, two chances, missed the breakaway, and then he missed easy, a pretty easy goal, just couldn't get it on his stick in time to find it on the left, excuse me, right side of Toyer. So looking back at it on the period, I think Toyer's been the big story of this game, and it's the reason why NC State has a 2-0 advantage heading into the third period. Well, and one thing, you know, talking with head coach Dowda of the Tar Heels before the game, one thing he mentioned to me was, you know, the credit he gave to NC State for coming out strong to start that Governor's Cup t game, and his team had to respond. NC State has done the same here, and they've been able to hold their own and hold their lead through that second period. But again, you look at how quickly this team can strike on the other side, and you know they're not far out of this game by any stretch of the imagination. So if you're NC State, you got to keep it locked down still in order to come away with the win through the final 20 minutes. Yeah, and that's been a problem for NC State this year. There's been times, I mentioned it a lot on the broadcast, where they haven't played a full 60 minutes of hockey. They've had times where they just really haven't played their style of hockey. They've been outplayed at times. Even in games, they've won by multiple goals. They just really haven't been there a full 60 minutes. Right now, I think they've played a full 40 minutes of hockey. They've got 20 left to prove that they can win this division. And we spoke to Coach Dowda before the game. He mentioned it's important to get this team to win tonight, take a little bit of the pressure off on Monday. You obviously want to win Monday no matter what, but you don't want that added pressure of having to go into it thinking, all right, this is a must win for playoff seating. This is a must win if we want to win the Atlantic Division. So a really big period coming up for the Tar Heels. Yeah, and one thing that you have to look at too is the shots on goal and the way things flipped in that second period. Part of it has to do with the momentum that North Carolina generated on their power play. They got a lot of good chances, but there's a phrase in hockey, building a game and I think right now that's what the Tar Heels are trying to do. NC State outshot them 14 to 6 in the first period. Shots flipped the other way 11-7 in favor of the Tar Heels in the second. So they got some more time. They got some more chances. They just didn't beat Isaac Torrio. He's really to me the big difference. He's made a couple of 10 bellers in that second period to keep the keep the Tar Heels off the board completely, but you got to be careful again. If you're NC State, this North Carolina team is number seventh in the region for a reason. They've beaten you once for a reason. They've won, I believe, four of the last six, five of the last seven in the series for a reason. And so NC State, again, got to keep it tight. Yeah, they got to keep it tight, and that's why going out this third period, I think it's important for NC State to play the most energetic hockey that they have coming out into this period. They've got to hit UNC in the mouth figuratively, not literally. They can't take a penalty. And we've seen how detrimental it's been to that defense today and we mentioned Cam Lore before with the injury not expected to return tonight that's a body you're already going to lose heading into the third period so this period for NC State you got to come out strong set the tone early push UNC back on the heels and I think even if you go up 3-0 if you're still up 2-0 with about five minutes left you still got to enforce and keep the game going like we saw against Virginia Tech last week Hokies were down a goal late into that game and they could never pull their goalie the final two and a half minutes and I think it's going to need that type of defensive effort for NC State tonight and we've seen that tonight they played with that great defense but can I hold for another 20 minutes. Well, as you mentioned, it's got to hold for another 20 minutes but it's been a great first 40 for the Ice Pack 2-0 lead over the Tar Heels. Locally owned and operated by an NC State graduate, the Red and White Shop is your source for all things NC State. Just off campus in the Ridgewood Shopping Center at 3526 Wade Avenue, the Red and White Shop has everything the NC State fan needs. Sporting goods and memorabilia, your favorite NC State team apparel, tailgating essentials, ice pack gear. A proud sponsor of the NC State hockey team, a percentage of all ice pack sales go back to the team. Stop by today or visit us online. The Red and White Shop. Welcome to Moe's! At Moe's, we've always been inviting, but we have a bigger story to tell. A place that welcomes you to be you. Fresh, high-quality ingredients. We got that. Go ahead, do your thing. Come on, let's get weird. We don't judge. Moe's wants you to come in with your crew and their appetites. Dine in, pick up, or order on the Mo Rewards app. Either way, don't just stroll in. Roll all in to Moe's Southwest Grill.
Back here in Invisalign Arena, Nick Parazzi with a special guest. I'm here with head of media content, Harrison Eaton. Harrison, it's been a long season for you. You've had a chance to travel with the team, be there every game, and even go to Europe. Kind of tell everybody how important your role is for this team. I mean, I wouldn't say my role is as important as what they do on the ice, but it is cool to have the opportunity to do what I do for such an awesome organization and team. That uh, This is my fourth season now, going on my fifth next year, will be from my final run. So, uh, But I pretty much do the whole graphic design, photography, videography with a great team. We have Kate Fuller. She's our social media coordinator. We have Katie Golick. She is our photographer. We have Jane McKenzie. He is awesome. He's our intern. And we have Noah Horn as well. He's a new addition as well. So we have a great team. Uh, people that we can trust every single day. So, And like I mentioned before, you've traveled a lot this season, even going to Europe. Kind of tell us going through, not a lot of people travel with the team, just really the players, coaches, and you. So what's kind of been that like for you, being the sole person there almost? Uh, it's got its ups and downs. So it's like long days on the road. It's uh, early mornings, late nights. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's good to be around those guys, get some social time with them, uh, you know, late night to the hotel, uh, you know, getting up scrapping for meals on the road so it's always fun with the bus grind with those guys they they make it a fun time well one final question for you as we approach the third period going into the last game of his line arena you mentioned last year will be your final year kind of tell us how this journey has been for you and how important it's been to you in your career so it's been unbelievable so as i was mentioning walking over here broadcasting was my first love and then uh, the COVID pandemic hit and then I had to kind of find an alternate and found this whole graphic design photography path and uh, thankfully to Zach Selway he was able to bring me on my senior year of high school uh, from Middle Creek and was able to do an internship program through the ice back and here I am now was doing graphics in my dorm my freshman year at App State but had to come back home to do what I love so back here one more final year with a great team so excited to go. I'm sure I can speak on behalf of everyone here at the Ice Pack, Pack TV, and even the fans of overall for NC State. You've been a fantastic job. You've done a fantastic job, and your creations have been phenomenal. Uh, we'd you. all thank like you. to thank you for that and your hard work that you put in each and every day. When we come back, me and Chris will detail the key points for each team and how to win the third period. Welcome to Mo! At Mo's, we've always been inviting, but we have a bigger story to tell, a place that welcomes you to be you fresh high quality ingredients we got that go ahead do your thing come on let's get weird we don't judge Moe's wants you to come in with your crew and their appetites dine in pick up or order on the Mo rewards app either way don't just stroll in roll all in to Moe's southwest grill life is for learning from baby steps to big ideas we plan try fail and do better next time each day is a new experiment a fresh chance to seek answers connection purpose the mind is not a vessel to be filled it's rocket fuel and when you start at nc state university you can't be stopped nc state think and do Hey there, doing some yard work? Installing a new fence, flowers, or shrubs? Stop! Don't dig just yet! You have buried gas, electric, and even internet lines down there. Before you pick up a shovel, pick up a phone or go online and contact 811. 811 is a free service. Yes, free! 811 is the first step to having those buried utilities marked. 811 keeps you safe, protects the lines, and it's the law. This safety message brought to you by North Carolina 811. Locally owned and operated by an NC State graduate, the Red and White Shop is your source for all things NC State. Just off campus in the Ridgewood Shopping Center at 3526 Wade Avenue, the Red and White Shop has everything the NC State fan needs. Sporting goods and memorabilia, your favorite NC State team apparel, tailgating essentials, ice pack gear. A proud sponsor of the NC State hockey team, a percentage of all ice pack sales go back to the team. Stop by today or visit us online. The Red and White Shop. Minutes away from the third and potentially final period of this matchup here tonight between NC State and North Carolina. 2 nothing lead for the Ice Pack as we get set for that third period. And Nick, as we get ready for it, now we're going to turn and look at what we expect out of these two teams headed into that final period. NC State obviously has the two-goal advantage. 
Yeah, they do. And I think right now for UNC, I'm going to start with them first. I think you've got to get the puck to O'Shaughnessy, Foster, Gilligan. We haven't really said their names a lot today. And when we have, the shots have been blocked. I think you've got to get them in the slot, pass the puck around, and get them a quick one-timer on the net. As for NC State, you got to keep up the excellent defense. And I think you also got to improve on working out of your own defensive end because that UNC forecheck has definitely started to win its way over, and they're building that offensive game. Uh, and if I look at it, I'm going to kind of build off of that point you made about North Carolina. I think you're right. They've got to get the puck to their goal scorer, particularly Patrick O'Shaughnessy. But I think the other thing is they've got to find a way to produce. Their top scorers have not been able to get mm -hmm. any good opportunities, and that has a lot to do with the way NC State has played them. They have not given O'Shaughnessy a lot of space. We've talked a couple of times about the two chances that Grady had. He's one of their top points getters, mm -hmm. but he's not necessarily a pure finisher the way O'Shaughnessy is. So if you're North Carolina, not only do you need to get it to your goal scorer in O'Shaughnessy and your playmakers like Gilligan as well, but you've got to find a way to produce when you're those guys. On the other side, if you're NC State, I think it's just to counter that. They've done an excellent job of stifling that top line, not giving them much, and I think it helps. We'll see how the lineup looks for North Carolina in the third period. We talked about Cam Lore being out for NC State. But for whatever reason, I haven't seen any bodies missing really from that North Carolina bench. But Henry Foster was back on the defensive side of the puck. He was back there in a defensive pairing in that second period. And if he's back there, that's less offense up front. He's more of a playmaker. He's not necessarily your goal scorer, but he can generate a lot as well. So if you're NC State, you got to continue to contain those guys because they're going to come out with everything they've got for this final 20 minutes. We're just about set for it. The boys are headed back down to the ice. We'll be back with the third period after this. We talk forever about the future, worry about it, or wish it closer. We try to glimpse the places we'll go, from ocean depths to the far side of the moon. At NC State University, the future is a thing you make, with bright ideas, new tools, and a wolf pack behind you. Tell us where you're headed. We'll help you get there. NC State. Think and do. From the top of D.H. Hill Library. Don Diablo. Oh, yeah, this is actually, like, uh, in my studio. With WKNC HD3 Raleigh. Hey, what's up and what's going on, folks? This is Kick Kinetic, your boy, up here at the top of the hour. And guess what I got? A treat that's too sweet to beat. This is Wolf Bites Radio. Oh, that's really sweet. In C State. Locally owned and operated by an NC State graduate, the Red and White Shop is your source for all things NC State. Just off campus in the Ridgewood Shopping Center at 3526 Wade Avenue, the Red and White Shop has everything the NC State fan needs. Sporting goods and memorabilia, your favorite NC State team apparel, tailgating essentials, ice pack gear. A proud sponsor of the NC State hockey team, a percentage of all ice pack sales go back to the team. Stop by today or visit us online. The Red and White Shop. I'm with 2018 lacrosse national champion Christian Gaudi for the FDA's Don't Get Burned Sunscreen Challenge. Bring it, Daryl. She's tough, but I won't get burned today. I'm using a broad-spectrum sunscreen. The FDA recommends broad-spectrum sunscreens with an SPF of 15 or higher with other sun protection measures to reduce the risk of sunburn and skin cancer. You smoke me, Kristen. That's because I use sunscreen, so I wouldn't get burned by you and the sun. Broad-spectrum sunscreen. It's a winning play every time. 20 minutes left to decide this one. NC State, a two-goal advantage over North Carolina. Chris Slavin, Nick Prazi back with you here at Invisalign Arena. It'll be Herman to take the draw for NC State up against Patrick O'Shaughnessy. Herman wins it forward, lifts it in, and here we go for the third and final period. Up the far wall, NC State can't hold the line. Speed now for Gilligan and O'Shaughnessy moving in. Gilligan fans on the pass, but he'll chase it down in the near corner. Help there by O'Shaughnessy. Stuck along the wall, they'll pitch away at it, and eventually the ice pack carry it out. Lifted up and out now by Herman. It'll trickle all the way in on Brown, and NC State with some pressure will get an offensive zone draw. Well, like once again, an odd man rush for UNC. The entire bench immediately stood up. They saw O'Shaughnessy on the left side with Tommy Gilligan with the puck, but it was NC State making another great defensive play to make them all sit back down. Florian Zayic has it off the faceoff for North Carolina, pushed up the far side for Dewey. He finds Cobber in the middle, crosses the blue line with Peltola. 
Dispossessed now by Labrizi. He's under pressure, upended, play carries on. NC State in control. Shook has some speed. Right through the neutral zone, he'll cut in on Gleason. Powering his way around, the defender does a nice job tying it up. Shook still has the puck though, and throws it off the side of the goal. Oliver collects the loose change. He'll backhand it up the wall for Brenner. Little bit of a different look here to the line for NC State with Cam Lohr out of the lineup. It's Shook out there with Emery Oliver and Aiden Brenner. Tar Heels ice the puck. A little over a minute in, another offensive zone draw for the Pack. Well, if you're UNC, you got 1850 left in this game to try to make that win streak go to 10. And if you're NC State right now, you're on a bit of a point streak as well. They've won seven of their last nine. They have six straight games with a point. 850 to go. You want to make that three points tonight and make it a you know, winner take all on Monday night. But right now, I think NC State this period. They are falling back a little bit. I think they could be a little more aggressive on the offensive end. It seems like they're playing more defensive and safe with the puck, though. Bressingham breaks it into the zone. Quick shot off the stick of Brown. He'll steer it right to a teammate in Walsh, who starts behind the net and picks up speed. Leaves it for Carson Rain, who carries it across the blue line. He'll be pressured there by the NC State defense, and they come away with it. Nice pack, unable to clear cleanly. It'll be Tar Heels back in control. Here's Edwards, looking to the far side for Kitsayos, missed his target, icing on the heels. And another offensive zone draw for NC State, but the first two have both been won by North Carolina. Now going into this faceoff for NC State, you want to win it, obviously, but I think if you win it, you just want to choose some clock here at the beginning, try to build something offensively. They haven't really had anything going to start this period offensively. They've got to try to build something. They, their step one, can they build it, is the question. Chigelski pushes the cross to the far side. Oliver sends it deep as NC State looks to set up a four check here. Katsayas can't handle the breakout pass. One time shot deflected on the way through, and Brown able to handle it. It was a shot from Cowan, a deflection from NC State's Thomas McEnany. Now James, button hooks with it at the red line. Gains the line, sends it deep. NC State will go in after it. Edwards and Oliver there to battle. Edwards sends it up the wall. Cowan sends it right back. Edwards again, and Cowan once more. So right now, NC State did exactly what they needed to after winning that offensive zone draw. This is going to be their first test after that draw, and it's that first line for UNC. Tommy Gilligan right in front of the net. Another chance goes by the wayside for the Tar Heels. Now Herman chips and chases through the neutral zone. He's got Robinson with him. Backhand pass denied by Henry Foster. And now the Tar Heels move up and out. Gilligan through the middle of the ice. Great back check there by Herman to knock it loose and send it back the other way. The captain Foster now in control for the heels. Lost it off his stick there. Chipped right back in. Miglior having some trouble with it. Pressure there from Robinson. And Arini to help as well. He'll go after Foster behind the net. Henry Foster looking to the far side. Kind of missed the outstretched Grady there. He'll recollect and go again. Foster straight through the middle. Upended, O'Shaughnessy squaring up. Blocker save made by Toyer. Three and a half gone in this third period. It's been two nothing for a long time. Last goal scored by Nick Shook with just under two minutes left in the first period. Another chance here for the Tar Heels, they score. Top of the near circle, O'Shaughnessy got loose and it's 2-1. Well, there you go. Like we mentioned in the intermission, they've got to find those top guys. A bad turnover there by Brenner. O'Shaughnessy immediately takes it right to the slot, wrists it home, and UNC finally on the board with 16-10 left in the period. And we've got ourselves a hockey game, folks. UNC has finally broken the code that is Isaac Toyer. And with 16-10 left, it is going to be a... Uh, Great game, I think. The Here's rest a of the turnover. Way. In comes Cobber, and a save made by Toyer. Well, NC State going to have to get themselves back together here and collect it. Another really good chance there. It could have been a tie game in a matter of seconds. Cobber went straight through the NC State defense. A bad pass there from McConaughey, and his goaltender bails him out. 
NC State gonna have to defend off the draw here. Broken out now by Kaufman. He's gonna push it along. Shook sends it deep. He'll go in after it. He and Kaufman both there. Left for Shook. Battling there behind the net with Gleason. He'll be forced into the near corner. Trying to direct it back behind. He does for Kaufman. Centering pass denied. Tar Heels moving forward. It's Cobber. He's got Peltola. Pushing past James down the near right wing. Going to defend the puck. Slides it through the middle. Nobody there in a blue jersey. NC State back up and out. Here comes Brenner. He's got Shook with him in the middle. Gives it to him. Nick Shook dragging, centering, just past the stick of Brenner. Kaufman first to the loose puck. Tried to send it deep, but it's stolen by Zayic. He'll force it out and find Doig down that far side. Rink wide for Kaber. Looking to the middle, and it'll be steered away by Toyer and into the near corner. Ice Pack trying to push it up the near wall. Still there along the blue line. Doig holds it, throws a shot blocker save made by Toyer. Tar Heels starting to build. Walsh circling with it up that far wall, looking for help as the Tar Heels make a change. Cross ice, nobody there. Miscommunication for the Tar Heels on that change. And NC State able to alleviate some pressure and get a line change. Up the far side, Walsh deflects it in. That'll negate any icing call. Cox first to it in the white jersey. Sent around for Scott Daniel. He'll advance it. Bressingham has some space, trying to force his way past Edwards and in. And we've got a penalty coming up on the Tar Heels. NC State going to go on the man advantage when it's touched. Right now, they've still got pressure in possession. Bronson on Daniel behind the goal. He's knocked down, and finally, the Tar Heels touch. And it'll be a power play for NC State. The call is hooking. Well, it seemed like UNC had all momentum. Almost had another goal quickly to tie the game at two. And they're gonna call it a hook on UNC's Ben Edwards. And a big chance for NC State to able to get it back. Even if they don't score, they've gotta build momentum on this power play. UNC has a lot more energy than the ice pack do right now. They've been flying up and down the ice. They're dominating offense his own time. Big chance for the ice pack to negate that. Here's Herman, NC State controls off the draw. Beautiful pass to Robinson, weaving through. Shot stopped by Brown. NC State with a good chance right off the bat here on the power play. Pinned to the near wall. NC State comes away with it. Labrizzi at the blue line. DDD was shook. Back across for Herman. He'll look to the middle, deflected on goal, and a pad save made by Brown again. This time the Tar Heels able to clear it all the way down, but a great couple of chances there for the ice pack. Oh, I thought that was going to be a goal for NC State, and I think that was all Lucas Brown. That was the best chance NC State's had inside the crease, but Lucas Brown with a very big time save to keep it a one goal game. Nick Shook spun around entering the zone. NC State gets possession back. Here's Robinson in tight, and a glove save from Brown. He's on top of it here on this penalty kill. Well, I always like to say staying home when you're a goalie, and that's exactly what Lucas Brown did. The puck gets picked up by NC State's um, Zach Herman, and he's able to find it into the middle for a quick shot on goal by Robinson. But that's what you do, stay home on the play and don't let an easy goal happen. Brown did that, was in the right position, and it was a shot right into him. Tar Heels won the defensive zone draw and cleared. That'll kill some time about halfway through this NC State power play. Herman. Pressure down the near wing. He's going to have to push it down low. Gleason there for the Tar Heels. Makes a nice play. Hand a stick. Can't clear though. Pop into the high slot on and off the stick of Robinson. And the Tar Heels send it the length of the ice again. And Mangle once again for UNC. He's got a four check on the shorthand penalty kill. He's done it a lot this game already. Has generated some offense. And the Breezy's calling for some players to get back. Most of them are all the way up the ice right now for NC State. Bad pass to the neutral zone. Gleason steps in front of it. He's going to be bodied up. Ice Pack will regroup at the red line. Daniel shoots it into the far corner. Takes a carom off the dasher. Popped up. Thronson gloves it down. Sends it to neutral ice where Grady can send it the rest of the way. NC State down to 10 seconds left on the power play. Looking like it's going to be a bit of a missed opportunity. As Cade Cox will reset, power play going to run out on the pack here. Cox skates it himself through the neutral zone. Just about pushed into the Carolina bench by O'Shaughnessy with a good hit. And now a chance here for the Tar Heels as it gets past Thronson. O'Shaughnessy with Gilligan. He scores. Two quick ones for Patrick O'Shaughnessy. He's the one we were talking about needing to score, and the Tar Heels have tied it up. Almost a 3-on-0 break. 
after the turnover. Cox has to hustle back, but O'Shaughnessy has said, I'm going to take it all the way. We mentioned O'Shaughnessy. We mentioned how quickly this UNC team can make it a hockey game. We didn't mention how quickly they could tie it, and that's certainly what they did. And we are tied at two. All momentum with the Tar Heels. Thought NC State built something off that power play momentum-wise. It all just went down the drain, and we've got ourselves a tie hockey game. Uh, that's what happens when you give O'Shaughnessy some time and space. And there's that goal off the rush as well. So a 2-2 hockey game, 12 minutes now to decide it. Tar Heels win the draw, they'll go to work. Foster looks all the way across for Doy. On and off his stick, NC State going to have to go back after it. Ice pack just don't seem to have the legs they did in the first two periods right now. Through the neutral zone. It'll be Brenner pushing it along. He's got Jagelski coming with him to the middle. And a big save made by Brown. Good chance there and a pretty good deflection by Jagelski as well. But Brown was up to the task. Tar Heels go back at it. Peltola meeting at the blue line with Jagelski. NC State comes away with the loose puck. Sent up the wall by Cowan. Brennan on Brenner under pressure will retreat. Back behind for James. Cowan taking his time, trying to float it up the far side. Miglior gloves it down, sends it cross ice to the near corner. Backhanded around by James. Cowan takes a hit, can't clear. Knocked down and held in by Carson Rain. He'll carry it down into the far corner. Backhanded out in front. Save made by Toyer. Loose behind the goal. They'll chase after it. It's Alex James for NC State. Tar Heels all over the pack right now as Arini knocked off the puck as he clears it. Leeson for the Heels now. Off the wall for Carson Rain. He'll look things over. 10.35 to go. Rain with space, takes the shot, swallowed up by Toyer. An easy one from the far side. Well, I tell you what, when there's that saying, when it rains, it pours. And for right now for NC State, it is definitely pouring pretty hard. The two goals quickly by O'Shaughnessy. The big saves by Lucas Brown took away two goals for NC State. And it seems like the energy in this building is just kind of evaporated, taken out of the building as a whole. And right now, UNC's got all momentum on their side. A great job by Gilligan to hold the zone for that moment. Labrisi trying to clear. Herman able to find the puck. He'll move it forward for Arini, trying to step around. Zayic, who stands him up at the blue line. Loose puck taken by Zayic. And now Gleason. Sent around the wall. Bresingham with the pressure on the forecheck. He finds Herman moving in with Arini. Shot coming, pad save. Arini didn't get everything on it. And Brown able to get the pad across to make the save. Now Labrizi, turnaround shot, hit a stick, deflects to the near corner, now it's Herman. He'll look it over. Backhanded down low, intended for Arini, went through his legs, and Zayic now can't clear. Labrizi at the blue line, he'll walk with it. Takes the shot through traffic, it's deflected over to the far side. Herman first to the loose puck for the pack. He'll look into the middle, has Labrizi coming in, now shook, and a great poke check made by O'Shaughnessy. Two on one here for the Tar Heels. O'Shaughnessy across, shot coming, pad save made, the rebound deflected wide. Toyer comes up big. Puck still loose. Bresingham lifts it out to center ice. Thronson knocks it down. And again, the heels. We'll pitch it in, they'll get a change. How about both goalies tonight playing their hearts out, making a couple of big saves. Big one there from Toyer. And here come the ice pack the other way. Bronson looking to the middle, it's not there. He'll just send it around the wall. Carolina gets to it first. Doig, space up the far side, looking to the middle. That one's off the mark, delayed offside. So the Tar Heels have to check up, and they'll send it back in. Brenner around the wall, takes a hit after doing so. Now Cade Cox moving forward. He's got space to move down the near wing. He'll go around Cobber. Backhand shot, and it was handled not all that <laughs> steadily by the goaltender Brown. A turnover and a chance again. McEnany looking to the middle. Bouncing puck, and they can't direct it on goal. Thomas McEnany steers it back behind. It was sent right, right back to him. Popped up in the air. Gloved down by Daniel. He finds Cade Cox at the blue line. Cox. Floats it down low. Trapped down soccer style by Daniel. He'll flick it back out to the blue line. Shot coming from McConaughey. And a save made by Brown. 
Well, after giving up those two goals from further out early on, Lucas Brown has really settled into this one. He definitely has, and when you look at the stat sheet, only two people have put the biscuit in the basket tonight. Nick Shook for NC State, and then Patrick O'Shaughnessy for UNC. I've got a strange feeling, Chris, that it's gonna be either number 27 in white or number 21 in UNC that is gonna make the big goal to give their team the lead, and as well as get a hat trick on the night. Walsh and Oliver on the draw. Oliver wins it forward for NC State. Right back out in front, but nobody there to put it on goal. And now Carson Rain chases down the loose puck and neutralize. He'll be pushed into the near corner, battling there with Cow, and he comes away with it. Trying to center and can't. NC State now has it. They'll move it up and out. Deflected into the neutral zone. Big Lior sends it right back. Here's NC State again. It's James. Off the wall, nobody there. NC State just out of sorts here. In fact, they only had four guys out there for a moment. Bouncing puck in front, popped up in the air. Miglior gloves it down. He'll try and put one on goal, but he's tied up. Carolina with all the pressure here. Turning tight with it there. Pass out in front by Kutseos is denied. Foster trying to throw it back towards the goal. That's blocked by Herman. NC State finds the loose puck. They'll lift it out in the neutral ice and get a couple of fresh bodies out there. Foster trying to take advantage of the extra space on the change. He'll lug it deep. Forces his way back behind the net, now into the near corner with it. High slot, NC State tying it up. Arini comes away with it, sweeps it off the wall. Nobody there in a white jersey. Robinson finds it at the red line. Good back check there, and NC State's offside as O'Shaughnessy was able to delay Robinson long enough to create that scenario, and it'll come back out on top of the Carolina blue line for the faceoff. The intensity in this building right now is off the charts. It seems like every single play, or should be this, it seems like the hinges of this game rest on every single play, every single bounce of the puck, every single skate and blade that cuts through the ice. Um, with 6.45 left, who knows what we're going to oh, see. Here the rest comes of the way. Gilligan, look out. And he can't direct it on goal. Coming out, Toyer pushes it away. NC State looking to break out once again. Here's Robinson. Pass denied through the middle. He gets back to it and finds Herman near side, who will swat it deep. Ice pack need a change, though. Brown sets it up for Zayic. He's got O'Shaughnessy feeling it this period. Nice play by Kaufman to body him off the puck, but it's only momentary. Back behind the net, O'Shaughnessy leaves it for Cobber, tied up there with McConaughey. NC State comes away with it. It's Brenner. Looking up the wall for Shook. One touch back, pass to Kaufman, who sends it back, but they can't connect. Tar Heels going at it again. This period has been all North Carolina. NC State has had very few opportunities. Brady shoots it in. Glove down by Toyer. He'll leave it there for Labrizi. Brenner sends it right back to his defenseman. Now here's Kaufman with some space in his own end. Looking over his options, Peltola in the way. Knocks it back to the ice pack defense, and now McConaughey gains the red line and chips it in. Five and a half minutes to go, still looking for the goal to separate these two teams. It was NC State with a pair in the first and a pair in the third here for the Tar Heels to even it up. Walsh gets a stick to it. He's on the other side of the red line, though. This is going to be icing. And it'll come all the way back down. And UNC bench not happy. They thought NC State gave a push and also deflected that puck. Adam Dowda not happy. Most well, I, of the UNC I, bench, they're not happy either there, Chris. I think the argument is that NC State made a play on that mm -hmm. puck, whether yeah, they, they touched too. it or not. And I think that's the argument that they're going to lose here. So NC State, the offensive zone draw, and an important one here. Oliver to take it for the pack up against the Tar Heels, Leighton Walsh. And the Blue Jerseys win it. Pushed forward by Cobber. He's got a pair of ice pack players on him. Gains the line, sends it in. NC State restarts. And again, ice pack, they just don't seem to be connecting here this period. It's a, a lot, lot of, of passes chemistry. off the mark. Like that one there, chipped along by Oliver. Edwards first to it for North Carolina. He's got Thronson. Lifted up, Walsh gets a glove to it, but can't control. He'll fight for it with Bressingham and come away with it. Left along for Kutseos. Looking to the middle, pass denied nicely by McConaughey. Still Kutseos, centering feed. That one's disrupted by Robinson in a foot race for it. He's going to chip it along. But again, NC State cannot control into the offensive end. Bronson back to Edwards. 
Now Kudseo steps around him in. Arini takes it away. NC State still can't possess. 4.15 to go as Edwards carries it in. Working his way around Cox who knocks it loose. Collected now by the captain Arini. NC State charging forward here. Garrett Arini looking to get around Grady. Lost the puck collected by Gilligan. And UNC brings it back out. Keep an eye on O'Shaughnessy in the middle of your screen there. He's got two already this period. Cowan up the wall but not out. And it'll be finished off there by Herman. He's got Arini forward, poked off his stick. And now NC State coming out. Cowan had a skate come up on him. And it looks like he's okay, but he is going to be the guilty party here, tripping up O'Shaughnessy. And with 3.42 to go, a huge power play for North Carolina. And that's absolutely the last thing you could afford to do is take a penalty. And Cowan takes the penalty, commits it on UNC's best player, O'Shaughnessy. 5.04 left, three, five on four, excuse me, with 3.42 left. A tripping call issued. All momentum with UNC is going to come up to this NC State defense right now. If they could get a stop, they're going to have two minutes. It's going to be an onslaught, I believe, from UNC. They've got that first line out there. Sometimes in hockey, you could smell a goal. You could sense something big is about to happen. I sense something big is about to happen, either a puck in the back of the net or some really big saves from Isaac Toyer. A huge special team opportunity here for North Carolina. O'Shaughnessy lifts it high. Wicked wrister there from the Tar Heel sniper. Foster back across to O'Shaughnessy. High slot for Grady. Recover, pardon me, his turnaround shot block. And NC State clears it out, but not past the red line. 20 seconds off the man advantage. Foster trying to walk it in. Stood up there by Labrizi, but he's got help. Tar Heels walking in. Big save made on the near, on the far post by Toyer as Foster slapped at one, and now we've got a Tar Heel down that looks to be Grady. Yeah, out of position, Bressingham and Labrizi at the point gave way to that good scoring opportunity for UNC, but now Grady down for the Tar Heels. It's been a rough night for him, hasn't been able to finish in front of the net, and now an injury. We've seen a lot today, Chris. It's something you really don't like to see, and he seems shaken up. The training staff will go out to check on him. Not sure what happened to him, but for UNC, this is not a good ordeal for them to have one of their top forwards out there on the ground. Uh, Grady on the season, 25 points in 22 games, 16 goals, nine assists. And he's gonna be able to get off under his own power. And it looks like he will be just fine. We're gonna get a little breather here on the bench though. 313 left in this third period, 132 left on the penalty to Jackson Cowan. And it's a 2-2 hockey game. And something to keep in mind, the first period shots, 14-6 NC State. Since then, UNC's put up 21 shots to just 15 for the ice pack. And I think that number's going to grow here. Another defensive zone draw for NC State. Tar Heels win it. Back to Foster at the blue line. He'll be pestered by Bresingham. Drops it off for O'Shaughnessy, who walks the line. Over to Foster, top of the far circle. He'll walk with it. Looking to the middle, pass denied, it will slide out and just get past the blue line. NC State able to kill a little bit more of this penalty. O'Shaughnessy walking it in, looking to drag around a man and Thronson knocks him down. And NC State gonna contain it to the near wall for the moment. Gilligan works behind the net, looks out in front and a great play made in the slot by Emery Oliver who clear it down. And NC State gets some fresh legs out there. 50 seconds left to kill. Foster moves it forward. It's been that top power play unit the whole time for North Carolina as Arini turns around and slaps it all the way down. Finally starting to see a change to the power play for North Carolina. O'Shaughnessy still out there though. He's got it now, looking to the middle. And Leighton Walsh unable to deflect it on goal. Might have been Cade Cox getting a piece of it first. But NC State with another face off in front of Isaac Toyer, 29 seconds left on the North Carolina power play. The hinges of this game are going to rest on this face off. If UNC could continue to get shots on goal if they win this face off, it's not going to spell well the final 210 for the ice pack. Big win. Can they clear it out, though, is the question. Cox off balance and able to clear on the first try, but he gets some help and looks like we might have another ice pack player down. 
as it was kind of an awkward fall for Cox. And his first game back too, took a big hit before, and ooh, that is not a good sight at all. Oh man. Well, that's a, a tough spot to fall into the boards. And the other thing for NC State, obviously the big concern here is making sure Kate Cox is okay. The other question though is where does the faceoff go? The right. puck was down the ice, and of course the injured player in the NC State end. We'll have to see what happens there, but right now Cox still down and getting some assistance. 2.03 left in this game. Again, 22 seconds left on the penalty to Jackson Cowan. And the other part about this, I think if North Carolina is smart here, they're gonna return to that top unit. I would be sending O'Shaughnessy, at least O'Shaughnessy and Foster back onto the ice here. They've got plenty of rest, especially with this extra delay. And they have absolutely been the most dangerous players on the ice tonight in blue. Yeah, we're gonna treat this like a timeout right now, I think. I'm down and not talking to the team, but Cox still down, down and not talking to the team. A lot of ice pack players finally now going over to the bench, I believe, but it's just not a good scene if you're, if you're NCC. You already lost Cam Moore. Now you're gonna be down Cade Cox once again, right as he came back, already missing Ricky Frosch. And it's just not a good sign right now for NC State. Another body that's gonna be lost. That you really hope Cade Cox is okay. It's his first game back too in the lineup. He's been suffering an injury a few weeks ago. And it's, NC State just cannot afford to lose him. He's played a really good game. He's looked a lot better than he did earlier in the season. Played a, made a lot of great defensive plays. And losing him here on the penalty kill, 2.03 left in the tie game. It's just detrimental. You just hope, though, that he's all right, able to get back up. Still no sign of what's going on down there, though. Well, and as they get a look out into the neutral zone here, the puck looks like it's sitting in the faceoff dot on top of the North Carolina blue line, so that's where it'll be. Right now, though, Kate Cox still down in that corner. And... I'm hoping this part is just out of an abundance of caution here. I do too. He went mm -hmm. down, again, you can kind of see it on that close-up camera as he was clearing it. He went and kind of went, you know, top down into the, uh, into the boards backwards. So my guess is kind of the head and neck concern. And hopefully mm -hmm. it's, again, hopefully it's just precautionary as this has become a bit of an extended break here. And that's a, another thing to look at now, how is this going to affect both teams? We talked about how North Carolina could potentially put that top unit back out there now with plenty of rest. You're breaking up the momentum now though, and it, that is certainly gonna favor NC State with how North Carolina has controlled most of this period. Yeah, it definitely has. Cade Cox still down in the same position. I'm, I'm getting really worried, Chris, about Cox right now. The way he went down, the way he's, uh, it, it's just a tough scene right now. I, really concerned right now for his safety and I really really hope Cox is okay Tim is out on the ice coach Tim Healy for the ice pack it's 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 a very serious injury um, referees are talking to both benches now and uh, it looks like we're gonna take a quick break here on the TV side as they attend to Cade Cox we're gonna step aside we'll be back we talk forever about the future worry about it or push it closer. We try to glimpse the places we'll go, from ocean depths to the far side of the moon. At NC State University, the future is a thing you make with bright ideas, new tools, and a wolf pack behind you. Tell us where you're headed. We'll help you get there. NC State, think and do. From the top of D.H. Hill Library. Don Diablo. Oh yeah, this is actually like uh, in my studio. With WKNC HD3 Raleigh. Hey, what's up and what's going on, folks? This is Kid Kinetic, your boy, up here at the top of the hour. And guess what I got? A treat that's too sweet to beat. This is Wolf Bites Radio. Oh, that's really sweet. In State. 
Locally owned and operated by an NC State graduate, the Red and White Shop is your source for all things NC State. Just off campus in the Ridgewood Shopping Center at 3526 Wade Avenue, the Red and White Shop has everything the NC State fan needs. Sporting goods and memorabilia, your favorite NC State team apparel, tailgating essentials, ice pack gear. A proud sponsor of the NC State hockey team, a percentage of all ice pack sales go back to the team. Stop by today or visit us online. The Red and White Shop. I'm with 2018 lacrosse national champion Christian Gaudi for the FDA's Don't Get Burned Sunscreen Challenge. Bring it, Daryl. She's tough, but I won't get burned today. I'm using a broad spectrum sunscreen. The FDA recommends broad spectrum sunscreens with an SPF of 15 or higher with other sun protection measures to reduce the risk of sunburn and skin cancer. You smoke me, Kristen. That's because I use sunscreen, so I wouldn't get burned by you and the sun. Broad spectrum sunscreen. It's a winning play every time. From the top of D.H. Hill Library. Don Diablo. Oh, yeah, this is actually, like, uh, in my studio. With WKNC HD3 Raleigh. Hey, what's up and what's going on, folks? This is Kid Kinetic, your boy, up here at the top of the hour. And guess what I got? A treat that's too sweet to be. This is Wolf Bites Radio. Oh, that's really sweet. In C State. Locally owned and operated by an NC State graduate, the Red and White Shop is your source for all things NC State. Just off campus in the Ridgewood Shopping Center at 3526 Wade Avenue, the Red and White Shop has everything the NC State fan needs. Sporting goods and memorabilia, your favorite NC State team apparel, tailgating essentials, ice pack gear. A proud sponsor of the NC State hockey team, a percentage of all ice pack sales go back to the team. Stop by today or visit us online. The Red and White Shop. Uh, we're back for just a, a quick update for you here at Invisalign Arena. Uh, unfortunately, not great news for Cade Cox as he's still down in the corner. NC State and North Carolina, for the most part, as you can see, still a couple of teammates out there waiting to see what happens here with Cox. But EMS has been called to come assess the situation and uh, help the NC State defenseman off the ice. So it's going to be an extended break for now. 2.03 left in the third period and a 2-2 game. This is not the way we wanted to see the end of this game pan out. But for now, we're waiting on some assistance for Cade Cox. And we'll step back aside here on Pack TV. Welcome to Mo! At Moe's, we've always been inviting, but we have a bigger story to tell. A place that welcomes you to be you. Fresh, high-quality ingredients. We got that. Go ahead, do your thing. Come on, let's get weird. We don't judge. Moe's wants you to come in with your crew and their appetites. Dine in, pick up, or order on the Mo Rewards app. Either way, don't just stroll in. Roll all in to Moe's Southwest Grill. Life is for learning. From baby steps to big ideas. We plan, try, fail, and do better next time. Each day is a new experiment. A fresh chance to seek answers. Connection. Purpose. The mind is not a vessel to be filled. It's rocket fuel. And when you start at NC State University, you can't be stopped. NC State. Think and do. Hey there, doing some yard work? Installing a new fence, flowers, or shrubs? Stop! Don't dig just yet! You have buried gas, electric, and even internet lines down there. Before you pick up a shovel, pick up a phone or go online and contact 811. 811 is a free service. Yes, free! 811 is the first step to having those buried utilities marked. 811 keeps you safe, protects the lines, and it's the law. The safety message brought to you by North Carolina 811. Locally owned and operated by an NC State graduate, the Red and White Shop is your source for all things NC State. Just off campus in the Ridgewood Shopping Center at 3526 Wade Avenue, the Red and White Shop has everything the NC State fan needs. Sporting goods and memorabilia, your favorite NC State team apparel, tailgating essentials, ice pack gear. A proud sponsor of the NC State hockey team, a percentage of all ice pack sales go back to the team. Stop by today or visit us online. The Red and White Shop. 
Locally owned and operated by an NC State graduate, the Red and White Shop is your source for all things NC State. Just off campus in the Ridgewood Shopping Center at 3526 Wade Avenue, the Red and White Shop has everything the NC State fan needs. Sporting goods and memorabilia, your favorite NC State team apparel, tailgating essentials, ice pack gear. A proud sponsor of the NC State hockey team, a percentage of all ice pack sales go back to the team. Stop by today or visit us online. The Red and White Shop. Welcome to Moe's! At Moe's, we've always been inviting, but we have a bigger story to tell. A place that welcomes you to be you. Fresh, high-quality ingredients. We got that. Go ahead, do your thing. Come on, let's get weird. We don't judge. Moe's wants you to come in with your crew and their appetites. Dine in, pick up, or order on the Mo Rewards app. Either way, don't just stroll in. Roll all in to Moe's Southwest Grill. Back at Invisalign Arena, Chris Lehman with you here in the third period. And again, still waiting on the medical team to arrive, the EMS, to help out Cade Cox. They have moved him slightly to his back, so he's not in quite as awkward of a position as when he fell. But again, they're taking all the precautions necessary to keep him as safe as possible. You know, just an unfortunate play in the corner, the way he awkwardly fell. But for now, still waiting on the EMS to come and help. Uh, the two teams again headed to their locker rooms. You can see some of the players out here uh, just waiting to see what happened. These guys play against each other and certainly they don't like each other when they're between the whistles and when they're between the glass. But when something like this happens, uh, they know each other outside of the game as well. And that, I think that relationship takes over a bit. But for now, we're going to step aside again. We'll be back in a few minutes with an update. Welcome to the ball. At Moe's, we've always been inviting, but we have a bigger story to tell. A place that welcomes you to be you. Fresh, high-quality ingredients. We got that. Go ahead, do your thing. Come on, let's get weird. We don't judge. Moe's wants you to come in with your crew and their appetites. Dine in, pick up, or order on the Mo Rewards app. Either way, don't just stroll in. Roll all in to Moe's Southwest Grill. Life is for learning, from baby steps to big ideas. We plan, try, fail, and do better next time. Each day is a new experiment, a fresh chance to seek answers, connection, purpose. The mind is not a vessel to be filled. It's rocket fuel. And when you start at NC State University, you can't be stopped. Lessons learned here don't end with graduation. A great university goes far beyond campus. It allows you to see the big picture. A great university gives you tools. Community. Partnership. A launch pad. You don't just go to NC State University. You take us with you. We talk forever about the future, worry about it, or wish it closer. We try to glimpse the places we'll go, from ocean depths to the far side of the moon. At NC State University, the future is a thing you make, with bright ideas, new tools, and a wolf pack behind you. Tell us where you're headed. We'll help you get there. NC State, think and do. We talk forever about the future, worry about it, or wish it closer. We try to glimpse the places we'll go, from ocean depths to the far side of the moon. At NC State University, the future is a thing you make, with bright ideas, new tools, and a wolf pack behind you. Tell us where you're headed. We'll help you get there. NC State, think and do. From the top of D.H. Hill Library. Don Diablo. Oh, yeah, this is actually, like, uh, in my studio. With WKNC HD3 Raleigh. Hey, what's up and what's going on, folks? It's Kid Kinetic, your boy, up here at the top of the hour. And guess what I got? A treat that's too sweet to beat. This is Wolf Bites Radio. Oh, that's really sweet. In C State. 
Locally owned and operated by an NC State graduate, the Red and White Shop is your source for all things NC State. Just off campus in the Ridgewood Shopping Center at 3526 Wade Avenue, the Red and White Shop has everything the NC State fan needs. Sporting goods and memorabilia, your favorite NC State team apparel, tailgating essentials, ice pack gear. A proud sponsor of the NC State hockey team, a percentage of all ice pack sales go back to the team. Stop by today or visit us online. The Red and White Shop. I'm with 2018 lacrosse national champion Christian Gaudi for the FDA's Don't Get Burned Sunscreen Challenge. Bring it, Daryl. She's tough, but I won't get burned today. I'm using a broad spectrum sunscreen. The FDA recommends broad spectrum sunscreens with an SPF of 15 or higher with other sun protection measures to reduce the risk of sunburn and skin cancer. You smoke me, Kristen. That's because I use sunscreen, so I wouldn't get burned by you and the sun. Broad spectrum sunscreen. It's a winning play every time. Still in an extended delay here at Invisalign Arena, NC State, as you can see with their team out on the ice. They all got together, the team did, and spoke with head coach Tim Healy, who's now out in front of the uh, kind of the scorers table area discussing things with the officials and the, NC, or the UNC coaching staff as to how this is going to go. We haven't had word, and it sounds like... Uh, we're going to step aside here. It sounds like they're getting ready to make a decision, but we'll come back and update you after this. Welcome to Moe's! At Moe's, we've always been inviting, but we have a bigger story to tell. A place that welcomes you to be you. Fresh, high-quality ingredients. We got that. Go ahead, do your thing. Come on, let's get weird. We don't judge. Moe's wants you to come in with your crew and their appetites. Dine in, pick up, or order on the Mo Rewards app. Either way, don't just stroll in, roll all in to Moe's Southwest Grill. Life is for learning. From baby steps to big ideas. We plan, try, fail, and do better next time. Each day is a new experiment. A fresh chance to seek answers. Connection. Purpose. The mind is not a vessel to be filled. It's rocket fuel. And when you start at NC State University, you can't be stopped. NC State. Think and do. Hey there, doing some yard work? Installing a new fence, flowers, or shrubs? Stop! Don't dig just yet! You have buried gas, electric, and even internet lines down there. Before you pick up a shovel, pick up a phone or go online and contact 811. 811 is a free service. Yes, free! 811 is the first step to having those buried utilities marked. 811 keeps you safe, protects the lines, and it's the law. The safety message brought to you by North Carolina 811. Locally owned and operated by an NC State graduate, the Red and White Shop is your source for all things NC State. Just off campus in the Ridgewood Shopping Center at 3526 Wade Avenue, the Red and White Shop has everything the NC State fan needs. Sporting goods and memorabilia, your favorite NC State team apparel, tailgating essentials, ice pack gear. A proud sponsor of the NC State hockey team, a percentage of all ice pack sales go back to the team. Stop by today or visit us online. The Red and White Shop. From the top of D.H. Hill Library. Don Diablo. Oh, yeah, this is actually, like, uh, in my studio. With WKNC HD3 Raleigh. Hey, what's up and what's going on, folks? This is Kid Kinetic, your boy, up here at the top of the hour. And guess what I got? A treat that's too sweet to be. This is Wolf Bites Radio. Oh, that's really sweet. In C State. Locally owned and operated by an NC State graduate, the Red and White Shop is your source for all things NC State. Just off campus in the Ridgewood Shopping Center at 3526 Wade Avenue, the Red and White Shop has everything the NC State fan needs. Sporting goods and memorabilia, your favorite NC State team apparel, tailgating essentials, ice pack gear. A proud sponsor of the NC State hockey team, a percentage of all ice pack sales go back to the team. Stop by today or visit us online. The Red and White Shop.
hey there, doing some yard work, installing a new fence, flowers, or shrubs? Stop! Don't dig just yet! You have buried gas, electric, and even internet lines down there. Before you pick up a shovel, pick up a phone or go online and contact 811. 811 is a free service. Yes, free! 811 is the first step to having those buried utilities marked. 811 keeps you safe, protects the lines, and it's the law. The safety message brought to you by North Carolina 811. Welcome to Moe's! At Moe's, we've always been inviting, but we have a bigger story to tell. A place that welcomes you to be you. Fresh, high-quality ingredients. We got that. Go ahead, do your thing. Come on, let's get weird. We don't judge. Moe's wants you to come in with your crew and their appetites. Dine in, pick up, or order on the Mo Rewards app. Either way, don't just stroll in. Roll all in to Moe's Southwest Grill. I'm with 2018 lacrosse national champion Christian Gaudi for the FDA's Don't Get Burned Sunscreen Challenge. Bring it, Daryl. She's tough, but I won't get burned today. I'm using a broad spectrum sunscreen. The FDA recommends broad spectrum sunscreens with an SPF of 15 or higher with other sun protection measures to reduce the risk of sunburn and skin cancer. You smoke me, Kristen. That's because I use sunscreen, so I wouldn't get burned by you and the sun. Broad spectrum sunscreen. It's a winning play every time. Well, we are back with one final update for you here at Invisalign Arena. Unfortunately, they are not going to continue play here tonight. It has been suspended due to the injury to Cade Cox. An awkward fall in the corner. Uh, he is still being assisted. You see both teams out on the ice right now. This has been an excellent, excellent series between these two teams this season. They split the first two games and going down to the wire for the third time in a row not the way we wanted to end tonight. We'll talk a little bit more about the details of what will happen going forward with this game, but for now, we're going to step aside and we'll be back inside the room to close things out uh, with you after this. Welcome to the Mo! At Moe's, we've always been inviting, but we have a bigger story to tell. A place that welcomes you to be you. Fresh, high-quality ingredients. We got that. Go ahead, do your thing. Come on, let's get weird. We don't judge. Moe's wants you to come in with your crew and their appetites. Dine in, pick up, or order on the Mo Rewards app. Either way, don't just stroll in. Roll all in to Moe's Southwest Grill. Life is for learning. From baby steps to big ideas. We plan, try, fail, and do better next time. Each day is a new experiment. A fresh chance to seek answers. Connection. Purpose. The mind is not a vessel to be filled. It's rocket fuel. And when you start at NC State University, you can't be stopped. NC State. Think and do. Hey there, doing some yard work? Installing a new fence, flowers, or shrubs? Stop! Don't dig just yet! You have buried gas, electric, and even internet lines down there. Before you pick up a shovel, pick up a phone or go online and contact 811. 811 is a free service. Yes, free! 811 is the first step to having those buried utilities marked. 811 keeps you safe, protects the lines, and it's the law. The safety message brought to you by North Carolina 811. Locally owned and operated by an NC State graduate, the Red and White Shop is your source for all things NC State. Just off campus in the Ridgewood Shopping Center at 3526 Wade Avenue, the Red and White Shop has everything the NC State fan needs. Sporting goods and memorabilia, your favorite NC State team apparel, tailgating essentials, ice pack gear. A proud sponsor of the NC State hockey team, a percentage of all ice pack sales go back to the team. Stop by today or visit us online. The Red and White Shop.
Well, this is certainly not how we expected nor wanted to end this game tonight. 2.03 left in the third period, and the game officially suspended with an injury to Cade Cox on a play clearing the puck on a penalty kill. And again, Nick, you know, a great game. This is not what we wanted to see to finish. No, it's, it's, it's definitely not. I'm, I'm at a loss of words right now. Uh, you can hear a pin drop outside in the rink. It, it, it's just hit everybody, man. The game... The game doesn't matter. The safety matters. The players matter. I, I'm, I agree with the decision to suspend the game. I, I don't see how you can go back out there and play after what we just saw. Um, we're not going to show anything about that injury again. Um, we hope everything is all right. Um, but, you know, there's there's things bigger than the game, and I, I think this is a lot bigger, and I, I really agree with the call to suspend the game. Absolutely. And for those of you who might be wondering how it will end, it'll have to wait till Monday. The announcement made that the final two minutes and change will be finished out uh, before the start of that Carolina Classic on Monday. So unfortunately, that's going to be where our coverage ends for tonight. It was an absolutely thrilling game up until the moment we had to stop it. Uh, and of course, our thoughts and prayers and our well wishes go out to Cade Cox and his family and of course, uh, all of his teammates on the Ice Pack squad who have to you know, go through this with their teammate. But that will do it for us tonight. Uh, suspended game. It will be finished on Monday, uh, but a 2-2 score at the moment.